So this is the 2023 Christmas release with Stampers Anonymous, and it is it is small and mighty. Um, as always, before I'll, I'll, I start, because sometimes I'll just get right into it, uh, I do not draw, and I, I've said this, I mean, I've been designing stamps for years and years. We're up to like CMS 476, uh, 476 stamp sets that I've done with Stampers Anonymous in, in clean rubber. Uh, I don't draw, I don't, but I, I find amazing artists, I license their art, uh, curated. So sometimes you'll see art used in different formats throughout all of my product brands. Uh, some stuff is actual vintage stuff that we have that we scan in and turn into stamps. And what I really love about designing for Stampers Anonymous is it does allow me to treat each set as its own idea. It's much different. It's a different process than let, let's say I'm doing ideology or where I'm doing Sizzix where I kind of think like, oh, this should work with this and, and this should scale with this. I take a completely different approach with Stampers Anonymous and I do love that because it gives me creative freedom where each set is a totally different vibe. Uh, some things work well together and you'll see in the makes how the makers have kind of mix and match a couple of the sets, but others are just like, wow, what a, what a crazy departure from one theme to the next. And that is the joy of, of stamping, right? There's so many different art styles out there. Uh, and so I'm, I'm super grateful that it, it takes all types to, to keep the creative industry supported. It takes the, the designers, the curators, the illustrators, the artists, all of that. So I'm going to go through the sets, the stamps and stencils, and then I will go into the makes. And the makes are broken down by set as well, so you, it's a, a great way to kind of connect the dots, okay? So we'll start with this first one. Uh, this first one was really inspired by Sharon, who's one of the makers. Uh, she went to uh, John Darian studio and saw these lino cuts and she's like, don't you think this art is so cool? She sent me a picture. I'm like, I do love that style. It's really interesting. So uh, it challenged me to go and try to find art that had this uh, lino cut vibe. Truth is some of this art on the set, so not all of it, but some of it uh, is, is used in the Sizzix. I think it was Christmas cutouts that I did maybe last year where I did houses and words. But then when I found this font, which is this wonderful font that is a, a hand done lino cut font, I knew it was like, okay, perfect, connect the dots. Now you'll see on my sets that you can kind of see through them. Uh, if you uh, purchase these sets, when you get them, you're gonna see that your set is a complete sheet of rubber. Uh, and, that, and I've talked about that in, in many releases. Let's talk about weeded and unweeded, meaning when the stamps are done, back in the day, I used to put like three or four stamps on a set and that was it. Because as the stamps are done, they are done in a sheet of rubber and Stampers Anonymous goes in and somebody by hand pulls the excess rubber after all the images are cut out. That's called weeding, where they're taking off the excess rubber. If there's just a few images, that's easy for them to do. But, but through the years, uh, Stampers Anonymous has allowed me to really pack the sets and give you a great value. And the trade-off is, hey, someone doesn't have to go in and like pull off the whole outline, which could take a lot of time per set. I'm like, the, the maker could weed. And some people choose to weed them like this. Others choose to actually leave that rubber framework in there, pull out a stamp and kind of pop it back in. You do whatever works for you, but you'll notice that all of my sets uh, are weeded. So when you get them, I don't want you to think like, oh, mine aren't cut out like his. They are, you just need to either pull off the backing or not. But just be aware, like if you have little stamps like this that don't have much clean cushion, you could lose them if you don't, but I keep mine, uh, safe and sound so it's it's good right see i agree <laughs> jody's like i'm willing to weed for more stamps i hear you that was that was my decision i wasn't even going to put that up for for opportunity it was like you know what it is what it is so the whole idea about festive print is that it is that that lino cut design very hand cut got a very cool uh, vibe to it you can stamp these in a variety of colors and you'll see from the inspiration of the makes, it's not just black and white. And sometimes people do see that when they see such a bold design, they think, oh, you know, I'm only gonna stamp it in black and I like bright colors. You'll see, you can use this in so many different colors. But we'll talk about the choice of words that I did. I wanted this to kind of be like a build your own sentiment, if you will, because maybe you're not a card maker, maybe you're just doing gift tags, maybe you're doing things for a holiday journal, maybe you're doing scrapbooking. So I wanted to kind of keep that in mind. There is a to and from. So if you were doing gift tags, you have the to and from. Then you have December 25th, if you're doing a like some type of journal, but then just fun things, like it could be Wonderland, but it could be Winter Wonderland or Christmas Wonderland. Uh, or holiday wonderland there's merry christmas there's bright so you could do merry there's a little plus here so it could be merry and bright or it could be peace hope and love 
or love and peace. I mean, there's a whole way to kind of mix and match. And, and sometimes depending on the options, I'll either put phrases together, maybe if it's vintage, but the other thing is really about uh, giving you, the maker, the opportunity to do some great scenes. And you'll also see that, yes, there are some great trees, so this could be wintry if you just wanted to do a little forest of trees, or maybe you wanted to do a little house stamp, so this could be used after Christmas, some of these uh, in particular. There's a little house with that heart cut out, so that could even be, you know, welcome to the neighborhood, or thinking of you, there's a heart. So keep that in mind when you're looking at a stamp set that uh, the images are there for you to use throughout the year for different things, okay? Not everything, but certainly some of them. All right, this next one <laughs> is my favorite. Uh, sometimes I just see art. It was kind of like when we, uh, we go back and I think of like when we did the, the crazy cats and dogs and birds, that sometimes I'll see art and it just strikes me. It makes me smile and I'll, I'll save it and I'll leave it there and I won't do anything with it and I'll come back and I'll look because it is such a, a departure from my personal style but there are things that just resonate and I, I believe as a maker that you have to sometimes play into your muse and let that go. This one is called Christmas Cartoons and it is very cartoons. I've seen comments since we posted it like it has kind of a Jetson vibe. It is like a Saturday morning cartoon. I love this illustrator. I love their style. I love all of these different characters and scenes. I certainly love the eggnog on ice. That's just fun. Uh, the little snowman, there's a cat, a dog, uh, the guy with the wreath, the lady with the presents. There's a, a cool like retro moon in a sky. I thought that was a cool design. Uh, Santa and the reindeer and very small. So that's really nice for all types of uh, different, different designs and lingo. A little carolers, snowball fight, or they're building a snowman. And then of course, well, that's me. There's my hair sticking right out of the top of my head. And of course, a candy cane bigger than the boy. That would be me all day long. <laughs> like bring on the candy and i'm happy but then then we we what's that it is it's totally me yeah look at that it's like there's a just super fun then um this is a font that i did uh for the sissic style for the santa wishes and i really loved the the design of it because it does have a great retro vibe uh and this was actually i was talking to paul i'm like isn't this a fun set like i love this there reminds me of a cartoon she's like you should do speech bubbles so thanks p for for that idea because it just kind of put everything together. It gave it uh, some, some use and you'll see how the makers really used it. Of course, these are separate, so you can just use them on any type of card, even if you wanted to just use it and you'll see how the makers used it with other things. But all of these will fit into these speech bubbles. And I did them in two different directions because obviously these, char these characters, they're facing different directions. And so I wanted to give you options, but you can stamp these and you can put these inside and well, it's just fun. So you're going to see this set, Christmas cartoons, used a lot of fun, uh, very cute ways. I just, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. And luckily this, this artist does different, different themes. So if this does well, who knows, we might see some more cartoons in our future. Then I always love something vintage and I try every year to find some type of vintage Santa. I don't know why I give myself that challenge, but I do. I'm like, I've got to find this year's Santa. I would say that tomorrow. This year's where it's just some type of Santa art. I've done everything from vintage postcards. I've done stuff a, a bit more modern and retro, but it, it has to speak to me because, you know, Santa could be a jolly, but sometimes he could be a creeper. So I wanted to find uh, art that just resonated. And, and when, and really, and when I saw this, like, he is just jolly. I loved this. This is from an old advert. So I really loved the styling of this because it's a solid design and all of that opening uh, is white. So it makes it really easy that you can just stamp that in red and be done, or it could be uh, stamped and embossed. There's so many options for this particular Santa. And this is called Jolly Holiday. It does have a bit of a Mary Poppins vibe. I do think of that when I think Jolly Holiday, but also tis the season to be jolly. So what's great about this set is you've got this full character who would fit on an a2 card slimline any of that but often i see makers that and in the past i've done santas where it's just the santa profile or the head so that's why i wanted to do this big guy as well it's just that enlarged and kind of cropped here then there's some other elements to kind of support that there's this wonderful peppermint stick candy cane this doesn't have to just be um, red and white this could be any color again you'll see from the makers this came from uh, a vintage postcard, a jolly good Christmas, a vintage ticket. So that I just scanned in some ephemera that came from uh, a vintage postcard. May your Christmas be happy and bright. 
I do love this. This is just a, I don't know where I found this. It was, it was something vintage that I kind of combined, maybe a bow from a gift tag, did a little Photoshop work. I love Every Good Wish for Christmas. Again, a very uh, nice detail. Then we have Manufacturing Confectioners. This came from some ledgers. You may have seen this in Ideology. This was from Ideology Ephemera, the co-op company department store, because I do love the whole department store Santa vibes. Four for 25 cents. Why? Why not? It's just a, a great piece of ephemera there. And then this little sparkly star background. I love to do some type of splatter or sparkle or star. I call them fill in the blankers because it never fails when you're doing a card. You, you know, you're, you're laying out some elements and you always got, has this weird space that it's like none of these images would really fit. And so having a little fill in the blanker, I, I do that in many, many sets because I think uh, it's really, it's really a, a fun thing. So again, look at all these images you're getting on the set. It's pretty amazing. And are they designed to all go together? Well, not every creative casserole is good. You can certainly do that if you're doing a larger project, but you have a lot of different creative opportunities for this. And that's where I love to see uh, how the makers interpret the sets. All right. Then the next one I talk about all the time, the importance of backgrounds. And I do try every release to sneak a background in because backgrounds to me are life. You need backgrounds. Why? Because again, fill in the blankers, but sometimes you just want some type of texture or pattern. And you've seen through the years that we've used all types of different background stamps from plaids to polka dots to anything. This particular one, this is called ticking and grain. And this is really about the texture of this. So this is scanned in linen. We've done papers like this for ideology, but you know, you might see this online and you might be like, oh, it's just stripes, but really it's all about the detail of this one. Uh, ticking being a, a type of a linen cloth, usually like a, a French ticking fabric and then grain because it's almost a, a grain sack or a feed sack. You see these big bold stripes on, on grain sacks and we wanted to capture the detail. And of course, Stampers Anonymous doing deeply etched rubber, we're able to capture the detail. So this particular set, I just wanted to show you how it looks stamped out because that's, in my opinion, where the magic comes in. So initially, as I mentioned, the whole uh, concept behind ticking and grain is that French fabric. You often see it in these colors of blue, this kind of grayish blue, but this is the detail that it stamps out. And this is just done on white heavy stock. You can do this on watercolor or whatever, but it, it creates a beautiful linen texture, but also all these little skippity bits, it makes for a really cool interpretation of an image. And I wanted to share it in, in this color because it is released at Christmas time, but it's not just Christmas. It's about saying, okay, I'm going to use this all year, especially if you're a vintage lover. Uh, it's beautiful behind anything vintage in all shades of browns and neutrals, but also really beautiful behind florals because again, it gives you that organic vibe. But of course, we're in the season. So as much as I really wanted to do orange and black because I'm in the Halloween mode, I'm like, stick with it, Holtz. This is a Christmas release, okay? So this is just showing you those same designs done in color. And I do love the idea of, of having that beautiful festive red. You can stamp this in archival. You can stamp it in oxide. You can stamp it in distress ink. Uh, I just use distress ink, but really whatever works for you. When you're working on a, a design like this, you can ink up the image by tapping it, or you can swipe it depending on uh, how you want that design to play out. So if you look at my design, sometimes you'll see some darker areas because I like to swipe first to ink it. And then I'll go back with my ink pad and just tap the ink in different areas to get more of an organic look. But of course, even though these are stripes, stripes give you the opportunity for plaids. And so there's some things that you can do with this particular stamp set. So on this one, we take ticking, which is this one. And that's why I did these big sheets for a better visual. You can create kind of a gingham or a check pattern by simply stamping it once, turning it, stamping it again. And it's very easy to see because the image itself, these are, <laughs> I've hidden it under here. Um, these are two separate stamps. So it's very easy. You can see how, how nice and cut they're cut right to the edge. So it gives you an, an easy visual representation of how you can create that easy check pattern. Isn't that cool? Really, really good. But then the nice thing about grain, it's a totally different one. So you might look and say, Oh, they look like two of the same. No way. Totally different. The fact that this has a completely different layout of, you know, a solid two skinnies, two wides, two skinny. Look at this. It creates a great plaid, almost tartan like Mario, almost, but, but I do love the fact that both of these 
have a completely different look when you're stamping them. All right, now, of course, doing this same and same and same and same, of course, can you do same and different? Yes, of course, you could do that as well. So now you can create your own festive plaids and this could be Christmas, this could be Halloween, this could be anything, but this is about taking uh, that, that grain one for the body. It doesn't really matter which, which order you stamp them in, to be honest, it's just completely up to you and, and your color choices. But you can see that even both of these stamps can be used and that would create three completely different looks uh, for a stamp set. And that's why I like to share that with you because sometimes, again, you're looking at an image and you're like, huh, stripes, original. And then you see the potential of that <laughs> and also just the texture. <laughs> what? I'm a, I'm a hard critic. On, Stripes, huh, I'm, a, I'm a hard, I'm a tough critic on myself. Am I not? Um, I am. That was awesome. But the, it's, it's really the texture. So never underestimate the power of a good background because now hopefully you can see this all year. It's very, very good. So yes, ink, oxide, archival, whatever you want to work with, you can. I just happen to stamp with distress ink because that's my jam. I do like that. Okay. Then... <laughs> original. <laughs> then our final set, um, this was inspired by a lot of elements, elements that we uh, had for lumberjack plaid flat lay, but also a lot of stuff that we used in Christmas ideology. Because to me, uh, the holidays are also winter. Winter is camping, outdoors, woodlands, pine trees, and all of these elements just give me uh, a warm and cozy feel. But of course, if, if you know someone that loves the outdoors or camping, many of these images could be used all year long. So for this particular set, this is called Winter Woodlands. Uh, this came out of, I think this came out of like a vintage scouting book where it had all the different types of uh, trees and, and branches and pine cones and bark. And I just, I love this. You've seen this as an ideology backdrop. We've had some ledgers. So like the lumber ledger, this came from a tag, uh, North Lumber Company. I did a little Photoshop work because I think it said something else. Maybe I think this was Idaho Lumber Company. And I was like, well, I really want it more for, for winter. Anyway, I added that. Little merchandise. I like this tag 205 because this can also be for 25. Order, you can write in your own because I know not everyone wants 25. Maybe you want 24. Give you the option to customize your own or staple it on. I love this. This came from a, a vintage Los Angeles tree farm. So cool that you could custom order your Christmas trees. So we've done this as a piece of ephemera in ideology a lot. Uh, this number, this just came from, I think, a, a vintage bus ticket. I just like the idea uh, of just numbers. I'm always a good... Uh, number lover and then this this is a, a vintage engraving of a tree and I love this because tree stamps are tricky because you know you want that tree to be full and lush but I love the idea of this engraving because it had this area that is that is light so you can see that when you stamp it you don't get just that solid blob you get a little bit of a little bit of definition on the inside of that and vintage illustrations are just perfect for that. So the tree definitely was a, a superstar for the makers. You'll see that many of them use just the tree and a couple elements uh, and some use the whole set. So, so that is the lineup of the stamp sets for Christmas. Just those five sets. Then we have some stencils and then we'll get into to the makes. So for stencils, I always like to just think of stencils as, as pattern. Not necessarily like, oh, you know, I, uh, this is a, a Christmas one. I've done some Christmas ones specifically where it's either Holly or Poinsettia or it says Merry Christmas. But once you have those, it's kind of like building on to, to other design elements. And so this one, I was wanted some retro stuff to maybe go with uh, the cartoons, but also some wintry stuff. So this first one, this is just sticks. Now, I don't really, I mean, I name them just for the sake of, of packaging, but we don't name them on the front anymore. I just like the idea of of just having a pattern and not worrying about the name, but this is sticks. You could use it, of course, vertical or horizontal. It has a, a great kind of modern approach, but perfect for year round use, for sure. You can layer it, you can uh, crisscross it. And let's talk real quick about layering. And, and I, this is, we're so far down that we, we won't go back and change it. But back in the day- Let's talk about sticks. Well, before there, before <laughs> there were layering, right? Before there were like layering stencils where you're buying a stencil and you got six or seven to layer, I wanted to take stencils on a different approach. Back in the day, stencils were always, you know, uh, 12 by 12s, nine by nines. They were full on stencils to cover a background. And when I approached Stampers Anonymous about doing stencils in this weird tag size, they're like, but it doesn't really cover a card front or it doesn't cover, you know, something big. And I go, well, <laughs> Stacy goes, does someone say sticks? And I said, well, 
This is just about layering. A stencil is just a layer. So let's call them layering stencils. Sometimes now in today's world, it's confusing because we now recognize layering stencils as a stencil that has three or four different layers that we build up. Well, like I said, we're not gonna go back and change all the names for the stencils, but that was really why we called them that from the get-go. Because I have had a few messages going, why do you call it, where are the rest of them? Like, okay, too long of a story. But I've said it here so I can always refer them now to this particular <laughs> video. Um, this one, I don't even know what I call this one. Twinkle, because I have Twinkle, I have Sparkle, I've started, I love stars. This one is kind of like old school, uh, maybe, maybe a little cosmic, maybe kind of a bowling alley vibe. I do love that. Uh, but these have some really great sparkly designs that could be used for many things. We did Hocus Pocus for Halloween, and that had a bit more of a whimsical vibe, I think, to go with those designs. This one's very classic, and I love it. I love the, the designs for this particular one. And this one, what is this one called? Berry Leaves. See, I don't even know because I only do it when I have to upload the art. So Berry Leaves, when I first saw this, I really thought of it as like this kind of modern, and I know it's not Holly, but I, just that modern vibe of like a leaf with a berry. I don't know why. Uh, you probably could think of it as like a little tree. You could think of it many different ways. Maybe, you know, use it upside down in like a feather drop. I don't know. But the idea behind this one is it still created something wintry and you could use it solid or you can use it i don't know see like to me i just look at art and i'm like i like it and that's it i don't think you should overthink thinking is overrated in the creative world and sometimes people try to overthink and and be too matchy matchy but i i love the designs of this then of course when we do stencils for the most part we release a mini set and that would be these designs but in a mini scale so it's not like we just crop this we actually reduce the entire bit of art uh, and that's where Matt works out his logic to make sure that the size of this is scalable for a mini. And that makes a big difference, especially when you're creating uh, different backgrounds. So here I just did some, just some quick inky swatches for, for reference, just so you can see the difference in scale between, uh, say, sticks, large and mini, because you might want that smaller scale for uh, a background to layer. Look at that one. See, I do love this one. So see, just in the color, it, this this could be festive and you'll see some festive ideas but this again could be totally year-round i love the the look of it. it has a great botanical vibe and then just these i think what's great about the sparkles is that you have just these larger ones that just have that that great burst to them but then all these smaller ones that really create some nice uh, anchor points and even if you're not using them with ink you'll see so many uh, ways that could be used with with different textures and different paste Speaking of which, before I get on to the elements, this one, because I, I always like to, to challenge my way of thinking as well, I love this design. And I know some people, when they look at stuff, they're like, man, he is, a, he is a bunch of blah, 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 because it's just sticks and he's trying to sell it to us for Christmas. No, it's about having a shape or an idea that you can use and explore how these designs are used. Case in point, sticks. So yes, sticks is just a stencil of that, okay? If you wanna call them sticks. But when you think sticks, especially around the holidays, I think of, well, peppermint sticks, candy canes, don't you? Now I have stencils called Candy Stripe, which makes a, a great background, but what if we combine the two? What if we take this with this, and we take this with this, stack them, and then ink them? Well, bam, candy sticks. Look at that. Look at that. So you can make your own candy sticks by using stencils. And yes, I saw a comment about birthday candles. So yes, you could totally take birthday candles, do a little flame on the top. But candy sticks are taking your stencils, taking a little bit of washi tape, securing your stencils together first, placing it down, and then you do your ink. Now, when you do your ink, you create a really nice, and I love how random this is. I love how mixed this is. It's just really fun. It's a fun way to use this. So in doing so, back to the idea of birthday candles or whatever, you can put a polka dot stencil on. You can put any kind of stencil on a stencil that has open space. Just remember, open and detail work well together. What you need to keep in mind, and now they are layering stencils. You're right, Caitlin. Um, when you work on this particular type of stencil, especially stencils like this, right? I call them the banjo stencils. I don't know why. I've never played the banjo. But it, when you use your ink tools, you want to make sure that you're following the lines of that, that top stencil. So don't go this way because even if they're taped together, see, 
you're going to be you're going to be playing the banjo here. Instead, you're going to be inking going across, and your ink will still get underneath that other one. Brushes are going to be your friend here. Uh, you won't have great luck if you try to use blending foam. You'll get some color, but you won't get the detail that you need to achieve this particular look. Then, once it's inked, you remove the stencil, clean it, clean this one because you're actually going to have like little stripes on this area. Just wipe it down. Then place this stencil back over the inked stripe stencil, only if you want these little sparkles. Then I went in and did some sparkle texture paste and I just applied that over the top, let it dry, and we've got these great little sparkly candy sticks. Now, I must confess something, something that I found very interesting to me, and I'm not one to be like, oh gosh, I don't know why it's doing that. I'm not going to say anything. Are you kidding? I am like that that geeky little chemist kid because I want to know how and why and I don't know how and why and I'm okay with that. But the first time I tried this idea, I loved lumberjack plaid. You see that color? But I didn't love this. Some people might. Now, if this is your jam, I've just given you the secret code. But I was like, what in the huh? What happened? I inked in lumberjack plaid, but when I did my paste, like, I don't know, that's like tutti frutti, kind of weird. So in true form, I got to test it all. So I went in with all the distress reds. I did. I did barn door. I did festive berry, candied apple, lumberjack plaid, fired brick, aged mahogany. Just quickly swiped my ink pad, did some sparkle because this is what's important as a maker. If something is interesting to you, whether that is interesting in a good way or whether that's interesting in a, does anybody have the same problem I would like to know way? <laughs> then my, uh, my suggestion is to try it yourself. Oh, Get yeah. what you have and try this out and see if like, oh, well, that's just the fact that texture paste does, does something to a red. Well, in this case, I discovered for whatever reason, this sparkle paste, whatever's in this, doesn't like whatever dyes are in this particular color of distress ink. Now, you have a lot of ways around this. If you don't ever want to worry about it, well, then you could ink in something permanent. Maybe you could ink in archival. I don't think archival blends as well through a stencil. You could also use paint. I mean, there, there are ways around it, but even microglaze, because believe it or not, this one is half microglazed and half not. Microglaze meaning I sealed the distress ink. It ate through the microglaze too. So whatever's going on with lumberjack plaid in this, they don't really like each other unless you like this color. And maybe you do because it does have a very cool retro candy cane. It's interesting, right? So that's just something that I always suggest and be that this kind of paste or any medium, if you're ever using something and you get an interesting or odd reaction, before you think something's wrong, it may just be how it reacts with that particular product. So instead of chucking the idea out the door going, well, I guess that doesn't work with that. I just like, well, gosh, I wonder if it does that to every red. And then I thought, hmm, no, I actually like fire brick. So I went back and did the same thing with fire brick and no, no change at all. It does intensify the color, but cool. And so I, I like to be, I like to be transparent about that because I don't think that there's anything wrong with a product just because it reacts with something it wasn't necessarily designed to work with in the first place. But cool, right? So I like that. So do you think I'm going to swatch this with every color? You bet I am because I want to see what it does to all the blues and the yellows and the greens because this color, this is almost you like, have to know. well, what this is almost know? like a neon color and we don't have neons in distress. So I like this. I do. It just wasn't what I was going for in that moment because that's always the mind of the maker. But now that I see it the next day, I'm like, I dig this color. It's really good, right? So yes, this is the one that I did this morning. Uh, just before live because things weren't working well last night. I didn't know why I tried it again. I tried microglaze and and after several times, I'm like, forget it. So I just did this before I went to sleep. I woke up and I'm like, huh, so weird. But then of course, as time went, I said tomorrow, I'm like, I'm still going to make that sample. <laughs> Aren't you glad I did? There you go. Okay. Moving on from the sticks, the sticks become candy sticks because well, this candy stripe stencil number 95. So we're going way back. Uh, is perfect and of course it's a mini so you could do the same thing uh, on the mini anyway just something fun to share when it came to to stencils which i liked okay all right yes yes then we have the element stencils and i love this i love that stampers anonymous uh, continues to support this idea because it's a great value uh, you get 12 stencils we've done some everyday art we didn't do elements for halloween so we don't do them for every release but it is nice when i kind of have this this collection of art that I think works for this 
concept, which is it's a smaller stencil. So the size of element stencils are even smaller than the mini, right? Which of course is smaller than the large. So in tag world, I mean, this is like a number five versus a number eight, but it's a small tag. But what's great about these is that this particular set has a lot of different components and you'll see from the makes, I won't go through each one because the makes will actually show that, but each element stencil has unique elements that can be used by themselves or you can create something with that one. So for example, there's your, there's a candle, there's some different types of trees. Uh, this one uh, could be coffee or tea, but it could also be hot chocolate if you wanted to add whipped cream. So here's a tree with some ornaments and a star. So this actually works where it's to scale, where you've got a tree, you've got a bucket, you've got ornaments and you've got a star and all these fit if you stack them on top of each other. But you can also just use the cool dots or a star, or you can use this little grid however you want. I mean, there's, there's many options and different elements, which is why I called them uh, element stencils. So a great, great value, but we also released this element set for Christmas. So that is the, that's the release for Stampers Anonymous Christmas. I, I couldn't be happier with it, really. I, I absolutely love it. Oh, and one more thing before I get started. I have it somewhere. There we go. I get asked every single time I share this. So these are the rings. These are cable rings. Stampers Anonymous sells these. It's just kind of like a little twisty uh, keychain, but this is how I keep all of my stencils. I just have them in number order. It's easier to find. Um, I, I always use the index. So when I'm looking for a stencil, I go to timholtz.com, I go to the index, I go to products, I go to Stampers Anonymous, I go to stencils. Everything is there in number order. And that's how I find, I'm like, oh, there's that stencil. And then I know the number. I just rub black paint in here because the stencils, when you get them, the number is actually engraved. That's just for inventory purposes. But if you just take a little bit of black paint, rub that on and wipe it off, any kind of black paint will do. The paint will stay on your stencil and it will be permanent in there. So even if you wash them, now I can easily see the number. So that's what I use, really. I just go to the products page on timmolts.com. I click Stampers Anonymous. I click, that's how I look for my stamps and stencils. Because once you find it, it has a number. And depending on how it's ordered, you just find the number. But these cable rings are nice because they just twist and then they unlock. And then when you're done, you just see, you connect that and you twist that. Versus a book ring that could explode uh, or verse, versus tying them together because when I use a stencil, I want it separate so I can throw it in the water. But anyway, those are uh, the cable binder rings. And I'm not saying they're the only ones that sell them, but a lot of people are, are looking for those because you can find them many places, but usually you have to buy, you know, a hundred at a time, which I don't, I don't even need that many. All right, here we go. Let's, let's get on with them and move these stencils out of the way. There we go. Can I hand those to you, Mario? Sure. Thank you very much. There you go. Okay. Let's get into the makes. So the first round of makes, we're going to start. And again, they're all done by, by stamp set. This is festive print. And as I mentioned, this was inspired by Sharon's love for lino cut. So it was only fitting to start with a card that Sharon did. So take a look at how colorful this card is that Sharon did. I love the idea of just using all of those trees, stamping them in different colors, overlapping them and layering with a stamped and embossed sentiment. So there you go, merry and bright, because these are all clean. You can just stick these right onto the block. So it's not like you have to stamp merry and stamp the plus and stamp bright because you can take these, put them on your block first and then stamp that. But I love the pops of color. I love all the layers of all these trees. It's just, isn't that great? It's just so cool to see that. Um, all the bright colors and then the contrast of merry and bright being in black and white. That's what I love. So I, I knew Sharon would just, and this is only one, she made an entire series with the set. I'll show you those uh, coming up soon, but there's so many ideas for a set. And that to me is what's exciting because when you sometimes look at the art, you just think of it as, as black and white, but it could be so many different, so many different elements. This next card, little, little shakety shake joy created this because there are some, some designs on here that of course creates that globe. So I love how she did a little bit of mica stain on the card front. There you can see that wonderful twinkle. So this is snowfall grit paste. So it creates that beautiful background where the mica stain is creating that shine. And then you've got the texture of those stencils, joyful wishes. And then you can see the elements in here and this could be stamped resist. You can stamp and cut these out. And then you've got a little shakety shake in there, but a great way to use that, that snow globe really and 
and add a, a snowy a snowy scene to the card. Isn't that cute? Love it with the little stars in there too. Very, very cool. And I'll bring in all the cards uh, at the end because I love that whole montage. Barbara created this card and I really love the, the use of color. I always say this when, when Barbara does cards, she just, I love this combination of, of teal and green and red, but take a look at that. And so the use of stamps, very clever here because we've got uh, distress embossing glaze here for color. I love how she used the tree as the border. There's that stick stencil in the background. So just using that really ties in well with that, that cut out or lino cut type design, the block. And then she has December 25th and then a little bit of trim on there. Isn't that fun? A great use of creating this. And this just kind of gives me the, like the vibe of like an ornament on the top just by cutting that out in a circle. You see a lot of makers really thought uh, ornaments, but yeah, isn't that color just fun? And that's mica stain. So I'm, I'm tipping it to the light so you can see the, the shine of glaze, the shine of mica. And that's important to remember as a card maker as well. Even though we love our inks, we love all our ink pads and all that. Don't forget all these great mediums because on a card, they do provide a whole different level of reflection, shimmer, texture to, to your card. This next one, Zoe with a Y created this. Uh, and I love the, the whole idea of having that resisted background with the stamps. So just taking those stamps and stamping a background so you can place all of these uh, on a background and just stamp it to create this, this block resist and then went in with some mica stain. I love that. And then that little fussy cut on, on craft. Cute, right? A few people cut out that globe. And the globe has little, I don't know, little sketchy bits on the outside. So if you're stamping it by itself, it gave you that cutout vibe, but you can also just cut those off if you're going to, to trim around there. But I love that. Love the stitching detail. It's just cool. When you see them all come together, it's amazing how many different ideas all come together. These, I will say, had me stumped at first. Um, so Anita made both of these cards. I'll tell you why they had me stumped in just a minute. First of all, let's just, let's admire this background, shall we? I love the idea of uh, going in with that ticking stamp in blue, where you can see just how beautiful that is. And then Anita went in, did some inking through that twinkle stencil and then use some sparkle paste. So you can see that the stars are inked and then uh, the sparkle paste put over the top. So it gives it that little bit of glitter. Then I love how she created these little, these little globes. And here's the thing to note. I did some big scale because I thought as makers, we would just want to use these. But if we always wanted to create winter snow globe scenes, that's why I did two of them because it was a smaller scale and it put the scene together. And that's really what's done here is just using those scenes. But then I looked at this, I'm like, okay, so we've got this little die that's there. And I know that these are from Sizzix. These are those little, those little domes. So she created a little shaker. This has some distress mica flakes. But when I was setting up the cards, I'll show you what I, what I mean by that. Um, I picked it up and it did this and I'm like, oh, oh, joyful. That's cute. So she has like, okay, she, she didn't want to, she just wanted like her voice, her verses to be like a little mix and match, like Merry Christmas and joyful. I'm like, okay. I didn't really understand it, but that that's okay. And then I was like, so what is the mechanism? And as I looked for the mechanism, like, why did she stamp an image? This is how my brain works. And I was like, I don't get it. Maybe she screwed up. Maybe she wanted to change it. I'm like, well, if she screwed up, she wouldn't want it. Anyway, it's like the year of the magnets, guys. Magnetic. So I need to put a magnet on the back of this magnet here. So there's your card. And that's what this whole tie is. So when they get the card, they can take this off and now they have an ornament to hang and they still have their card. Come on, Wowza. come on, right? It's like, that's what I said. It's like the year of the magnets because cool. I'm really glad that I didn't have to figure this out on live. Like I had to figure out other magnets previously, but I was like, why is that moving? That's very clever to just take because these little flat magnets, they're, they're available and I love the idea of just creating that because that's really, really a, a clever, clever idea of, of giving a card and creating an ornament all out of the, the elements that you like. Brilliant, right? I mean, really my gosh, so, so clever. I mean, I still also like this. So someone needs to create like a little spinner thing because whatever, but hey, if you want a spinner thing, a magnet is gonna work for you. Let me just tell you that. It, it makes a, a pretty durable spinner if you're doing a reveal. All right, so there you go. Cool, right? Amazing, amazing, amazing. Brilliant, brilliant in every way. Great job, Anita. Then we have some, 
some cute ornaments that Kath made. So if you just want to create ornaments, there you go. You can take your favorite dies. You can take circle dies. Just because this is on a base doesn't mean you have to leave it as a base. Look at how Kath did these ornaments just using circles and stacking those up. You can use uh, different layers of cardstock, but I love the metallic in here. So this is, you can use a little deco sheet. You can use any type of sparkly paper, but I love, I love that. So this is stamped and embossed on what appears to be deco sheet back there. And I love because the black is, the black is embossing powder back there. So I love just that really wonderful contrast. Then we have the trees. I also love how she has the scene. And then she took uh, another tree because the trees are also separate and then stamped in and layered that on top of the acetate. And then we have December 25th and a little tie. So uh, really charming for ornaments, but also tags. I see whenever I see metallic and sparkle for the holidays, I, I do think I do think wine or, or a gift tag. I don't know why I do just think it does. And see, it's got some some little crystals in there, little chunkity bits. I do love that. Beautiful, really cool to see uh, how makers interpret a stamp set, right? Wild, it just gets better, I'm telling you. It just, we're gonna keep going and going and going. So Natifa created this and I love how uh, Tifa used a clear envelope, that is magic. And look at all this snow. If you could like texture vision, oh my gosh. I love this snowy scene on this clear, clear, envelope and then all of the the stamping and the pen work on here really fun because it, it makes it pop on that clear envelope then she's got a little little velcro tab and then a card i mean come on that's just that's magic right there so here we've got uh i love the use of stamped imagery on craft but this opens to a whole winter scene i mean come on that Tifa is so freaking cool. Look at, just look at all those trees. Just stamping, stamping, cutting, glittering. I love how it's got a bazillion trees because this just makes it magic. This is something that you would, you know, you would just set it up. You would set that up just so you can display it because you've got all that sparkle. But just to do that on craft, it's still very magical, very festive. And just all that little pen dot work. So for people that love to do all the detail, it's magic. And then this little guy, of course, from Christmas cartoons. How perfect is that from a scale perspective? Because you've got him in the background, Santa and the reindeer, and how that style really does work with the cuts. It is magical. I absolutely love that. Just the amount of work and the sparkle, but it, it is just, when you sit down and do repetition, especially when you're just there, you're like, I'm gonna just stamp trees and just cut, 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 do some glitter, do some sparkle. But yeah, the, the wintry vibe that this has is, <laughs> It's definitely, it is definitely magical. Winter wonderland for sure. Isn't that great? So good. So, so good. Just, it is. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. I, I love this clear envelope it's because it's so, see, it's like thick and chunky. Uh, Natifa does a great job. She does a lot of, a lot of sharing on social. So you definitely want to check it out because she shares uh, the process of so many things and as many of the makers do. All right, let's keep going. This one. I will admit, perplexed, don't know how, but I'm sure Vicky's gonna share at some point, but Vicky created this card. I don't know. It, the whole thing is like, it looks wood burned. So clearly inks in some water. I love that this is a, a wood grain stamp. So you've got that wood grain stamped in the back because this is smooth, although this paper uh, probably seems to be textured, uh, but it appears to be just stamped. But look at how that image looks like it's just burned in there a whole different vibe for that lino cut right <laughs> because you know you can see it as a very modern stylistic cut but you can also see it as kind of like that wood branding where you get that great detail and i love the bleed around it because it gives it that that authentic look of of that char that smolder all the way around uh, i love this card then you can see just that stick stencil in the back just with sparkle so the nice thing about this paste is it is translucent it just adds a little subtle sparkle so when the light hits it you can see that but not great some fasteners little ideology texture hammer for the wind if you haven't hammered your brads yet guys with a texture hammer you're missing out on a whole lot of fun because it's very cool uh, how it adds that that great texture just beautiful so great card vicky I, I love it again a whole different vibe a different aesthetic to 
to an image and just seeing it in a different way. Wonderful. Then we have some card series, and I always love when the makers send sets of cards. You know, they're required to, to just make two for live, and so many of the makers make more than that. And, and I'm grateful, and I know Stampers Anonymous is, because we send them to Stampers Anonymous, and they, they take them around to their shows and display them. So uh, thanks to all the makers that create like a whole series of cards that, that Stampers Anonymous has. So as, as mentioned, Sharon didn't just make one card. She was like, once I do it, Tim, I can't stop. I can't stop. And I'm like, good. So here is an entire series. I'm going to see if I can start on the, the right frame and just kind of show you all of these cards that she did in different colors. How did I do? Wow, not bad. I pretty much stayed on frame. But the whole idea about creating cards, once you, once you have your direction, you have your idea, you can use different types of ink pads, or if you create your DIY ink pad, your, your custom DIY uh, distress, you can already have these kind of ombre inks. However you want to, to create with this, you can. You can mix and match all types of colors, but repetition in different colors, there, there is beauty in simplicity. And I love how the cards are just on this watercolor cardstock, a little paper distressing. So take the paper distressor, go around the edge just to add that, that fray. So you don't want to have to go and sew all your cards. And then I love that it's on that craft background, but then still on a, on a white card panel. So Sharon's just, I just love it. And if you don't want to create a, a blend, take your ink cubes, you know, do all your, your swishing and swiping because it doesn't really matter how, how blended it is. I love seeing all the different breaks of, of colors used. It's a fun way to use up maybe colors that you haven't used in a while. Just really, really good absolutely brilliant and i do encourage you to follow the makers go to the makers page meet the makers go to the makers page you'll see their photos you'll see their links you'll see their blog you'll see their social because you don't know what you don't know really important amazing right love love the cards there's so many of them oh my gosh we're just getting started with card series too so Alberto created these and I love the fact he normally does, you know, so much detail coloring. I like that he just, he created a, a play with, with color. Um, I did mount them on cards because it was just the card front. So I, I did put them on color cardstock. He probably wouldn't, but I did just because I wanted to have something to, to hold on to. But I love again how he stamped these. There's little bits of, of snowy glitter. They're cut out and, and dimensionalized. But again, repetition, just that whole concept of, of utilizing these in, in different colors and changing, let's see again. Oh yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I have to look behind just to see if I'm, I'm still on, on frame, but I love the idea of, of taking those houses, switching up the scenes, maybe just using different colors and then taking the different sentiments from that stamp set and creating your own custom greeting. That to me is, is the fun idea. I think it's just really, it's really amazing. Just seeing that, that repetition of layers and that little bit of sparkle. So there's plenty of ideas and this is just one single stamp set because the image, remember, we're talking a, a cut image. So the black is your color. That having no ink here, that you're not doing a resist or anything fancy, that's the image. So that's why it's really important to pay attention to the stamp art. And when you see something in black, that's a color. That's all you've got to think about. If you don't see any, any color, that's going to be whatever paper you stamp it on, be that brown, so it's brown in here, or white, because it's white in here. It's all about, it's all about visualizing the, the stamp set itself. This next little set, I love these. These were really great. I love how Keisha uh, created little scenes with these cards. So to me, they're, it's, it's kind of a, a little blend of, of many worlds, and I love that. I love seeing that little twinkle in the background of that stencil. Then we see a little splattering, but then on this craft, there's some beautiful blending. Looks like a little oxide. I love how the trees are stamped in colors, different shades of greens. In, in here, we've got houses stamped in different shades of blue. And then we've got one of the sentiments just bold in black, but then she paired it with a little ideology clippings to kind of create a, a greeting. So walking in a winter wonderland, it's Christmas time in the city, merry and bright, and then stamp that globe and cut it out. So that's what I said. It's kind of like just blending all the components of that stamp set and saying, right, I'm going to use some of these images for the background, you know, kind of the, the supporting cast of the trees or the house. 
and then I've got two different globe scenes, one a little bit more uh, outdoors, trees, one a little bit with the, the house and the buildings. But isn't that great on craft, with the color, with the images, with the splatter, with that little stencil, because if you do snowfall, it will take up some of the color. So when you put snowfall grit paste over the top, it will absorb the color that it goes on top of, which is great because it, it, it totally morphs with your background. I love these. These are beautiful, beautiful cards, Keisha. I, I love that. It's always surprising, you know, because I look at that and a lot of times Keisha is really bright colors and I love seeing uh, that pop of, of bright on the, the neutral. Is this good? Makers surprise me all the time. They do. They just surprise me. They're like, we're going to do what we do. You just watch. So Kath created these as well. So in addition to those ornaments, Kath also created this little uh, set of cards. I love the color. I love the embossing. And I also love the, the little circle here, little shine. But I think it's just that black and white on top of a color. That's what I see for, for each of these. Really, really unique way of creating with sprays, doing a little additional stamping, doing some embossing, doing some stenciling, but I like how they're, they're different where she cut this out and she used the negative of that circle for this card. So here on the outside, that's where you've got uh, acetate and there's sparkle on here. So you can see that that acetate sparkles. So, you know, that leftover that we talk about, use it on another card or use it, you know, to mask. There's so many different ways to incorporate it, but then taking, you know, that, that little berry leaf stencil, it's still festive to me. And I love seeing that in, in black and white. So whether you're doing mica stain or inks, this is where a compartmental making really can, can come into play because you can spray and ink some backgrounds. They don't have to be saturated in color. Sometimes people really spend a lot of time on backgrounds <clears throat> and you overthink it. Now backgrounds are great if you wanna do a color blend or something that you wanna die cut, but embracing the space of a background and just taking your your mica stains or ink sprays or whatever, and just giving it a couple of spritz and let it dry so you have uh, that spray pattern to do the work for you. It's just really, really cool. Layering your elements and not everything has to be the same. It's how, how different makers process different things. That's the inspiration there. Then we have these cards. I love these cards that Rochelle did. Rochelle did a great series of, of cards. I love just seeing uh, Rochelle's style of making it. It's a great way, again, to use your images and use the bold color and pattern. So here, uh, starting just on cardstock, but the background, she took the, the, the ticking and grain stamps, but stamped them on the diagonal. So as long as that's gonna be smaller than, you know, you have a smaller card panel, instead of just stamping it horizontal or vertical, just stamp on the diagonal and you get what mimics kind of a candy stripe with that great texture. And then again, just on watercolor cardstock, it could be white heavy stock, whatever cardstock you like to stamp on. I love how she just stamped little scenes in color and then stamped right over the top of that as well. A little stitching edge, because we know Rochelle can sew like nobody's business to doing some sewing uh, around the edge. But see, doing all of your blends. So cards do not have to be, they don't have to be overwhelming. I just think that you have to to allow yourself just to play. And the embellishments, I love how she, she just changed them up. We've got little tiny bells, little tiny tag, little word tag. Look at that, peace, love, and hope. I love the, the trees with that star on the top. Isn't that great? Just the colors, it's just a fun, it's a fun card series. See that, that little starry stamp? Because again, it's a tiny stamp, but having a fill in the blanker, do you see what I mean? You just fill in the blanks. You don't have to do any masking or anything if you don't want to, but uh, a beautiful, a beautiful card series just using that same stamp set, right? Wow, Rochelle, just cool. So you don't have to cut things out. You can, you don't have to. Then this is just colorful fun. Doesn't surprise me. Jen is like, yeah, well, I see Christmas in rainbow and that's perfect. Look at how fun and bright uh, Jen's cards are. I think just seeing how she really took advantage of all of these words just to put them on a block and, and ink them and create these wonderful backgrounds. I love the break. So maybe all of these fit on maybe a smaller card front. So if you're like, okay, well I have all these, but I don't have enough to, to fill a full A2. Okay. Well maybe you had a, I don't, I'm not sure how she did it, but maybe she had enough just to fill this, 
but creating that cut break in a card allows you to either build a little scene there, add some layering, adding a, a globe, some sparkle. I love seeing that, that snowfall in the back. See, that's just put on there. That snowfall grip paste just has such great, great sparkle. But yeah, having that rainbow Christmas vibe is very cool, isn't it? I, I just love seeing the whole different approach and you know, you can identify, well, these makers have made for a long time. You can easily identify what they do and, and how they do it. I think that's really important. So this stamp set, festive print, CMS 472, created all this. I'll just start again. We'll, we'll put this on. There's no way I'm going to be able to fit all the cards, but you'll, you get the idea for sure. This is my favorite shot. Well, you know, it, it's going to be coming up, but it's, I always just do it. And some people are like, I wish you would just do that after the live. I'm like, I wish you would not share that with me. <laughs> so there you go. All right. Oh, I'm getting friend. a bit sassy, huh? You are, I know, but it's just how it is. You know, well, it's, you put in hours of work and you have somebody that just needs to be judgy McJudge. Haters are my motivators. To me, I'm just like, yeah, well, watch how much, how much more time I spend doing this next time. Yeah. This is my all right. Absolute favorite. Well, I think it is important to just see all the inspiration on screen. Challenge is just fitting all the inspiration on screen, but we'll, we'll get the idea here. It's probably just going to be an overload. So just start, start doing a little visual picture in your mind because it's, it's going to get crowded. It's going to be a crowded space soon. Yeah. It's already getting overcrowded, but you, you do get the, the gist. I don't want to leave anyone out because I think it's just important. I really want to put this envelope up here because I love, oh yeah, we'll do that. We got this. We do. Fabulous. Fabulous. That is magical. Beautiful. Look at that. Still, but that you know that there's lots and lots of layered, there we go. Lots of layered ideas under here. It's just, it's cool to see oh, all wow. these ideas. That is awesome. Yeah, all these ideas from a single stamp set, that's got to be incredibly overwhelming. And that's the idea of a live is that you can look at a stamp set and you're like, I need some ideas. You may not like an entire idea, but you can certainly be inspired by elements by going, oh, I love that background idea of that stencil and that stamp. Or, oh, I love the idea of just doing the, the word repetition. You may not want to do the cutout center. You may want to just do these cards with the words and never use the images. That's okay. That's why I try to pack a lot of stuff on a stamp set because I think it is important to, to be able to pick and choose the elements that you want to use and don't feel like you have to use everything um, all the time. So there we go. That was good fun. All right, let me load these up for, for Mario and we'll get on to the next stamp set. Great job makers. I mean, so much inspiration and seriously, these card sets are, but yeah, Sharon's like, I just can't stop. I have to do them in every color. I'm like, go for it. Just keep, keep going. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. Look at these. So much inspiration. Wow. 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 That's Beautiful. pretty impressive. All right. This next one. Well, <laughs> Christmas cartoons. It's, it, it, it is going to be, it, it's going to be a fun one. Um, now I will tell you this. And uh, Zoe Hillman will be sharing her make following the live. It didn't make it here for live, but she'll be sharing it. This die, because we, we talked about it after, or this stamp after, after the, the Zoom. She's like, I have an idea. I'm like, I, I hope I, I think I know where you're going. This stamp set is scaled to fit this die. What die? This die. If you remember this Biggs, uh, it is a retired die. I think it's still available in many places. Uh, so definitely check it out. If you love the whole idea of the retro TV, which I do, um, these were designed to fit into the retro TV. So yes, all along when you thought of cartoons, what better thing for cartoons than of course a television. Now, uh, I don't know if Sizzix still has the, the domes, but we did some rounded rectangle uh, domes so you can make little snowy scenes in the retro TV. It also fit the, the retro oven die, but uh, Zoe's going to have a make that she'll be posting on social today uh, showing her make with the TV because you can use this a lot of different ways. You can dimensionalize it. Uh, there's so many things, but I wanted to point that out that even if you wanted to do, you know, that little little Santa scene, see how the Santa and the reindeer, now you kind of get that whole curve. It was curved to fit inside uh, this die. Yes, sometimes I do think of the, the other things, but I absolutely love the, the concept of of mixing and matching. Now, even though these were scaled, if you are into that whole kind of Jetson vibe, if you have this die, this is also a fun one to pair uh, with this because especially if you're going a little cosmic, you can take any of these retro designs uh, and put that. So I just wanted to, 
what you just do, I know we're talking stamps, but if you have some dies, don't ever forget what's in the toy box. You might have some, some great ways to, to mix and match what you have, which I, I do love it. I see a lot of people saying they have that TV die. I, I said, if you, if you get this whenever, and I don't even remember how many years we did it. Like, you're gonna find that this die comes in handy many, many times. Not just for that, but it could be for a, a tree, it could be for Western stamps, for little scenes. Anything is just, it has, this TV is instant nostalgia. Like you just can't help it. That's what it is. And the fact that it's a Biggs die uh, allows you to cut it out of chipboard and then cut it out of papers and do your layering and, and it could be a standalone. You could do a, you know, a, a folded card, like a little A-frame card, just to have it, it, there's so many ideas. All right, we got to move on to, to the makes. Here we go. So the makes, <laughs> the makers definitely played with the cartoon vibe. So we'll start with, with Sharon, just because I loved how she interpret, interpreted this card and just kind of created her own cartoon scene. Because when you see cartoons, you can either watch them on TV or if you saw them uh, in the newspaper, they were all these little blocks and some had words and some you just kind of had to follow the storyline. So I love how Sharon just created all these little scenes where she did the stamps, but then she just kind of filled in with the pen line just to create these little snowy hills. I love how she really just didn't color the, the characters just did those on backgrounds that she did some scribbly pen work. I mean, they're, it's just really charming. There it is. Like, hey, see? Bring on the candy. Bring on the eggnog. It's just so cute. I love how the pets can kind of go with it. I love this. I love this addition of, of just doing that, that little doodle work. And I think really giving it a foundational line, man, it just it anchors the whole thing. They're just singing the carolers. And then I really love how she uh, has Santa and the reindeer and then that sentiment be of good cheer that's all she did and that is raised but how great is that i mean that's a card and that's a big card but that could also be something in a frame um, or something that you put on a clipboard and that's the inspiration because sometimes you'll look at stamp art and roll your eyes and be like i just don't get it but this my gosh it's just fun any element is fun it's hilarious to me and if you saw the little um sharon just stamped this because she always sends me a little note with her makes to Mario and myself and she stamped this and then she just did a little speech bubble and she wrote in the speech bubble, you know, uh, thanks so much. I love making. It was just really cute. Super like cute. it was so fun. And I'm like, I need to just start stamping this and just writing in my own speech bubble. I love it. It's very cute. Really fun. All right. Tammy B created this. I love this big et cetera tag. Look at all of that wonderful color in the background of mica stain. Oh, those new mica stains this year just have some beautiful, beautiful color. Then she did uh, the sparkle texture paste over the whole thing just to create that wonderful glitter. Little ideology, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And then just did uh, a little family scene. I love how she has everyone uh, just so cheerful. She's got everyone there. Isn't that cute? So fun. I love the, the color of this, how really it's, it's very subtle. Just charming. Absolutely charming make, and I do. I that's what I was saying about texture. Yes, you can stick with just cardstock, but the whole sparkly mica mix of it, but what it just, isn't it fun? Cause you get, you get to create your own storyline, your own holiday storyline for Christmas cartoons. What, what's better than that? I said we make it's 200 so of those for our Christmas cards. I will, I, I can definitely do 200, well not of, not of that or not of this next one, but, <laughs> but certainly I can do the, the kid with the candy cane. We always joke about 200 cards, we don't make 200 cards, but it started many years ago when I said, you know, when you have to go make 200 cards and Mario's like, who makes 200 cards? But I'm remember like, remember when we did make cards? We did. That yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, it is fun. When you, when you get in the zone, it's fun. Then you don't feel the stress about it. So, uh, Kubert created these. I love the idea of gift tags as well, because you can utilize these uh, components in many different ways. I love how she also paired them with the bottle brush tree stamp that we did last year. That's because it has a, a very similar, fun, cool vibe how she just went in and, and cut around these. Really great how she also used the stencils for the background. So you can see there's one stencil, there's the sticks, and then we've got the twinkle back there. But again, all with the bottle brush tree, look at that. It's, they're so cute. They're just really fun. I love their clothes, I love their styling. Isn't that fun? Just good fun. So Kabir created these, but then, if you remember the bottle brush tree, uh, card that she did before she created one uh for this scene as well i don't know what side this is this is 
more than a slim line. This is like a full line. This is almost like the whole screen, but look at that scene. It, it, it is a card. It, do, it doesn't have to be a card though, because again, this is, this is frame worthy when you put in all that work. But I love how she incorporated some of the snowfall grit paste down here. So she gave it a snowy foundation. Then she also used uh, the, I, I love the idea of using the festive print. And she cut these out, but you can use dies. So if you don't have the stamp set and you have this, you can certainly do houses and trees, but I love how she mixed stamp with stamp. That is a lot of cutting work, a lot of cutting work because that's like the ins and outs and in-betweens. But hey, if you like to just sit and cut, you can create your own little scene or these could all be individual scenes. This is another way to make where you can just make all this on a sheet and then just decide where you want to edit for your cards. But really fun. Merry Christmas. Fa -la 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 -la. Let it snow. Great fun. And I also like just some some little hidden gems in there. You can see it's like there's a stamp from it's like, OK, I'm going to sneak that stamp in. And I love when the makers do that. Like there's a little bit from from Jolly Holiday. There's a little bit from uh, Winter Woodlands because you can mix and match however you want. So great, isn't it? Just fun. I think. I hear you sing again. Well, you know, you don't. But that was a lot of la la la's in there for sure. OK, we're going to keep going. Joy created this card. Really cute with the, we've got mica stain here. We've got some sparkle paste arrow this way. Oh, look at that. Look at that little slider. Cute. He's just going the wrong way. Cause that would be me running away from, from my parents saying, no, 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 I'm going to keep this candy. Look at that. It's like, look what I got. How cute is that little, little motion? You know me but there's a background. So we do have some other stamp images. We have some candy stripe backgrounds. If, if you don't want to do the ticking, you can do pattern paper, but just play, play around with the different elements that you have. There is that little sparkly, that fill in the blanker. Remember I talked about uh, Jolly Holiday, this one. So that starry little sparkly background, it pairs well with this. And that's what I mentioned at the beginning when I was sharing the stamps that while each stamp set is its own idea, you also have the ability to take elements from different sets and mix and match on your cards. But how cute is that? Really, really fun. A jolly good Christmas. Cute card. Alberto created this card. There we go. Look at that. There his, there's his illustration work in action. I love how he, he colored this, this couple singing some carols, but then put them in like a, a wintry forest that he illustrated. So if you have the, the skills and ability to draw or a sketch, you can certainly put to so many different elements on, on your cards. I just think that's such a, a brilliant skill to have, but I love how they're, look at that perspective. I mean, even the shadow and like the, the shadow under there, like this, the light is coming down. That's brilliance, beautiful. And then just the coloring. I mean, come on. I'm not even gonna guess the color medium this time. I love his little sparkle detail he does by hand. I also, oh, this is cool. I just noticed this. I love how he paired Mary from uh, the Christmas cartoons with Christmas from, uh, th that's really cool, from Festive Print. So that does look really well together because it's a block style. Fun, isn't it? Just like, wow, 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 so cool. These, I've always said, and I'm so glad that, uh, that Tifa did these because Natifa did these and I, I, here's what I've always said. I've always said that ideology backdrops really lend themselves to cards. Now, they're not traditional card bases. I will say that because you have stuff on the inside, but if you are a vintage lover, it is a, it is a great foundation for card bases. Now, I'm not exactly sure how many layers are here. She's watching, maybe she could tell because there are so many layers stacked and stamped. It's, it's mind blowing for each one. When you create a card like this and you think, well, where then where do you write your sentiment? You could still add a tag in here, or you can take a sheet of paper. You can do any of those elements and put this inside just to have that. But the pieces, the, the piece count and like layers on top of this, every single backdrop, has a whole different element to it, okay? So we've got the, I'll just, I'll just pick this one up to start. So you've got a card base, then there's another panel here, and the panel has the stamped image, then there's another panel 
of the acetate, okay? Then there's, I don't, I think these are just stamped. Yeah, there's no shakety shake, but it's, see there's like stamping over the top of that. There's like some text there. And then another layer of the, the ticking, and then another layer of backdrops as a frame. That's what I was saying, like look how many layers on there. And then you have the Christmas cartoons stamped in, in craft. Tifa, really, how many layers? I, I gotta know. Uh, stamped in craft and then cut out and then clippings. Like, how cool. Like, so just, I just love the detail. I really do. I think the detail of, of all of these and this one, like, naughty or nice, hilarious edit. Hilarious edit right there where you just don't ink that part of the stamp. Asked and answered right? Really hilarious. Just very, very clever for, for these cards. Just a really brilliant way to, to do this. Yeah. Backdrops, layers, craft. So if you're one of those where you're looking at that stamp set, you're like, nah, I'm not going to do it because uh, I don't want to do all the coloring and all that. Like, there you go. Because uh, she doesn't know either. <laughs> I don't remember. Because all the coloring is really all of your, your backdrops. Four or five. Yeah. It's just brilliant. Just brilliant. Magic. Pure magic. Ideas are magic. All right. So Emma created this. There's, there's so many cute little ideas when it comes to, when you have tiny stamps, you can have little ideas, right? And so Emma created all of these little elements using this set. Okay. So I just want to, just want to share all the things that, that can be created. And I love how uh, Emma used a lot of dyes. So it could be dyes from chapter three. Uh, that I did with Sizzix last year where you you have maybe you have little coin envelopes and I love the stamping again of the grain and ticking you can see all of that little stitching detail work or you can just do little cards because maybe you want these to be uh, little ornaments that they hang or you want to tie these on as gift tags look at that even the detail on the back so cute to just to take different so you could take any of your dye elements you can take your uh, stamps, your washi tape, and look at all those little scenes and just have fun playing and coloring. This one doing that little bag. So if you have a little gift bag die, maybe you want to, to add something uh, inside there, do some stamping, a little bit of mica. I just love all the different ideas put together. So when you sit down for this set, they could be anything, but because they're small, they really lend themselves to little tags or you know, the, this coin envelope die is perfect for gift cards and also a little bit of cash at, at Christmas. I just think that's great. But also if you have any type of die cut bags or boxes, they really fit uh, well. And of course, you know, you can still gift them. So you can make gift tags. I would say make tags for your non-maker friends where they can put hand, handmade tags on their, their gifts and then a little sewing. So if I saw a lot of people in yesterday's live where they're like, I want to do sewing, I want to do sewing. Well, Start on paper, get that figured out and then move on to fabric. There you go. That's one way. I love it. Look at that little detail. Look at a little bit of stickles on here. So cute. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Love the ideas. Oh my gosh, they're just piling up. So good. All right, we, we still have a few more. So this next set, Jen created, I thought it was a great way to also use this stamp set. So take a look at Christmas cartoons just done again in rainbow style. Uh, and Jen, just, you know, you do you. So if you like color, if you like certain dyes. So this is from the Santa Greetings Sizzix die, just using that alphabet. But I love how she did different words for each card. And I really love the background. So you place the stamps down. So if you see the backgrounds, that background is where these images are placed on a big block, stamp it, and then you can go in with that little star and fill in the blanks. But how great is that just to see them? And I really, I also like, now I get it. I didn't get it at first. I totally get it. I get that this pairs with this. Hello, Captain Obvious. There we go. Make it merry. Be of good cheer. So she just kind of edited that and added a whole different, see, peace on earth. I get it now. Because I'm like, she edited the sentiment, joy to the world. And I love that strip of paper, jingle all the way. So again, when you edit, you don't have to cut apart your stamp. You just don't ink that part of the stamp. Believe in the magic. 
really, I mean, you could cut apart your stamps. I know many makers do, but how, how fun are these card backgrounds in all these different colors? <laughs> fun, fun. Great idea for using that stamp set, creating backgrounds. So many different ideas, right? Really good set. Then this last one, this is Anita, and I do not know the amount of hours this set took because there is a set and each one is like an entire storyline. And there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of illustration done, but to me, there's like little Easter eggs and I, I may catch some of them, probably not all of them, but like I look at this element and I think, hmm, I wonder if she traced that, that from the stencil. Maybe not, maybe she just drew that in, but look at just the, the detail where she filled in the scene and then she added stamps from other stamp sets, right? So like whether Crazy Cats where we did uh, Meowie Christmas. This one, like I recognize this as possibly mimicking the, the stick stencil. This to me, I think came from the elements, which is a, the holly branch. So I, I think that there's like all sorts of little Easter eggs on here of, of hidden gems, but the additional detail work to create this is, is just brilliant. Just brilliant. There's Oh Humbug. Look at this one. Dear Santa, I've been good this year. Mostly, sometimes, once. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Again, I think it was Snarky, right? Snarky Cats yeah. is what we did. Yeah, I, I say Crazy Cats, but I think these came from Snarky. And you just said Hilarious. all elements. Yeah, see? All of these. Because that's like, that's the outline. And then she just did like the fill in the blank. Just brilliant, Anita. So, I mean, and just just the coloring and just having fun. So that's the thing. You can have such a, look at this one. Be of good cheer. Oh my gosh, I love how she's holding the eggnog. And he's like, yeah, bring it. Great use for that stamp set. Just splitting it up where he's holding. That's really, really good. They're, they're all of good cheer. Make it merry. All right. He's happy with the nog. Happy with the candy cane. What milk? What cookies? Nope. It's nog and candy for this. There's that tree for the elements. Hello, December with the little packages. There's the tree. There's the little baubles. I love that big burst. That's also from Elements. Shiny things everywhere. Am I just supposed to see? It's so fun. I, that is such a great, great kind of, because you're reading this greeting and then it's, it's almost like a whole different storyline from the pets at the bottom. I love that. That's really good. Look at that. Look at that whole wintry scene. Just how I envisioned it. Little snowy hills. And I love the addition of those little circles where they're having a snowball fight. So good. Despite the look on my face, I'm still of good cheer. See? And I love this because you can see those little, those little sparkles where like clearly the cat's been hit by the snowballs. That's hilarious. Just the action. Gosh. Who knew Anita's all this illustrator? Seriously. Those are beautiful. I know. That's what I said. It's like a whole storyline. I mean, in addition, just the stamps, all the extra pen work to create the scene. But I mean, what a set. So like this card set, so cool, but what a, what a great banner this would make. All right, just a fun, I can't fit them all, but you know, put them on a string with, with some ideology clips. What? That's just, that's so good. So, so good. A lot of fun. Anita said to me, yeah. uh, when, you know, when they arrived, she goes, oh, I hope they get my humor. I go, they are so funny. Oh my gosh, they're hilarious. Yeah. They really are. They're just, because again, it's like, it's like a double story because you've got the story of, of what's going on and, and then you have the pets. I love it. So take a look at all of, uh, all of these samples. So many great makes. Gosh, I just, I do love these. I love, I don't know what it is about. I got to put Naughty right. You know that Naughty is going to go right there because, well, she's hilarious. All right. So many cards, so many cards, so many beautiful ideas. Um, and really just a, a fun way to incorporate this stamp set. Yeah. The Kubera one, I'll have to just like, I don't know, it'll be off the edge, but I'll, I'll put in some extra tags up here. <laughs> oh my gosh. This one's going to, this one's going to be tough. This is a toughie. Yeah. We'll put these. Yeah. It's the, it's the money shot always. Let's go. Let's put this one under here. There we go. Little nog in there. All right. Just got that. Then we'll put these. Let's put him in. There we are. See, I'm turning around, like looking at the camera at the same time. And we've got, oop, oop. Let me shuffle this one under here. I should probably build from the bottom up. I don't work that way. That requires thinking and thought to me is, it's a skill that I don't, cause see there's Tammy. Look at this. It's like coin dozer. 
You guys ever see those games where it pushes the coin off? That would be me. Oh my gosh. I said we make that into a puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You can make it into a puzzle. We do puzzles. Is it? We do like that. All right. That that's a that's a good start. But that's so true. many ideas really for for Christmas cartoons. I think seeing these uh, and seeing different ways to use them. You know where where you can do you can do the coloring. You can go in and do all the detail stuff. But you can also uh, create scenes. You can create uh, cartoons. You can do different backgrounds. You can use them just on on craft. Uh, or you can just go all out and do scenes or, or make something that just kind of uh, has some action. Gosh, so many ideas. The makers just, they crush it. They really do. They just, they crush all of the, the whole ideas for how everything is, is done. Thanks, Mario. You're welcome. Inspiring, right? Just that's, that's what this should bring is so much inspiration with, with all these samples. Thank Amazing. You. Thank you. Okay. Next, we'll move on to some, some festive ideas because we've got Jolly Holiday. So we've got, we've got Santa coming up, this one right here. You'll see that the approach from, from the makers is, is kind of, it's everywhere, which I really like about uh, a set like this. It has some different elements because they certainly pick and choose how they want to use this and how creative uh, they are with the different image choices. So this particular one, because of the Santas, are used a, a lot of different ways. So this first one Cassie did, I love the festive colors. And of course, just you see him, this is what I was saying about the, the design of the stamp. Remember, ju just much uh, like any type of image, including festive prints, when you see an image that has so much solid, that's just your ink color. You, you have to get, get beyond the black and white of the actual stamp set. So when you stamp him in red, You've got just that great Santa. You can certainly go in and just ink that part of the stamp a different color. So this is all one image. Okay, these aren't cut out and layered. This is just inking in red and then inking in black down there because all the white is just going to be uh, your background color. But I also love how she went in. You can see in the back there is that background stamp. And this is why that ticking in grain is such an important stripe stamp. Because if you have a regular solid stripe, it's going to stamp really bold. But because this ticking has all of this this little areas in there, it creates some beautiful texture. I love the inky background. There's some crackle paste of that twinkle. And there, of course, are, are the sticks. The candy sticks are just magic. And I love the little scribbly pen work. There's some holly, but very, very jolly, very festive card. And of course, the department store tag on there. So Cassie just, it, it I don't know, it oozes festivities. I do love it. It's really fun. Juliana created this. I love how, how she dimensionalized this. So again, you can take this image, stamp it three times. You don't have to stamp it three times in its entirety if you know this is your, your goal at the end. But then go in and, and fussy cut. So I love how she's got the entire base. And then on the second stamp, she just cut off the, the pants and the boots and then layered that. And then on the last one, she went in and did all the detail. Look at that. Around his beard and his hat. See, so many people, when it comes to cutting, they find it very therapeutic and they just love it. They love the, the ability to just sit and cut. But the background, I love all the different stamps used. So the background, a lot of these elements are from uh, the, the winter, I think it's called Winter Woodlands. Let me just, yes, Winter Woodlands. I was gonna say Woodland Winter, but Winter Woodlands. But then there's also some elements from Jolly Holiday. Peace on Earth, that's from Christmas cartoons. Again, I told you that there's gonna be stamps where you wouldn't think that because of what you see this font with the cartoons, it wouldn't work with something else. It pairs perfectly with this because it's still that retro advert Santa. And then of course, some die cuts. So if you have any die cuts, now's the time to get out all those little greens, add that little bit of snowfall paste and just tuck them under. Still give them that like that little, little fluffy look to them. Beautiful, beautiful card, Julianne. I love the, the little bit of metallic craft stock on the edge as well. That's just, that's a, that's a great card. Very great. Magical. Speaking of magical, Nico created this. Take a look at this magic approach. I love that. Look at these stars done in mica stain. I love how Nico took Santa, gave him a little bit of shine, going in and doing some, some coloring to add the elements. Just use bright, but I love how it created these, these little starry balloons. And then took that, that star sparkle stamp from Jolly Holiday, and I love the little wires on here. But isn't that... And that's just, that's magical. It's a fun, whimsical, magical card. 
um, for the holidays. So if you don't want the traditional red and green and wintry colors, I mean, that's just, that's fun and sparkly and bright indeed. I think it is. It's, it's just magical. It's just so, so good. I love the, I love the ideas that everyone's just like, you know what, this is how I see this and this is how I want to, to use it. I love that, Nico. Really fun. Barbara created this one. Here's what I, I again, I'll talk about Barbara's use of color all the time. Her palette is just like, I'm going to do what I do. And this one with this pink and, and pistachio is very cool. But I want to point out a couple of things. I noticed last night this background. And at first I was like, I, I needed to wrap my head around it because I identified the stamp. But then this dye, the layer dots, this was from the Sizzix Halloween release. So I love the layer dots with the stamped images. So you can see that the, the ticking and grain are stamped and embossed. So you get that embossing. And then when this is die cut, you get the dots and you get the stripes all layered. And I just thought that was, that was such a, a great use of the dies and stamps together and layered. And then she's got our Santa from Jolly Holiday. And then again, using the, the speech bubbles from Christmas cartoons. So see the makers just kind of do do their own thing, but they work really, really well together. But the dots and the stripes, like that background idea is great for so many seasons. I love the idea of the dots and the stripes. I really do. I think just because of that linear look, but also just the shine. So great card, Barbara. A lot of fun. A little bit of, you can see when the light hits it, all of that sparkle paste. I love how the makers put so much sparkle on their things because it's got that little shine. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Zoe with a Y created this. This card is stunning. I love the texture. I love the vintageness, the coolness of this. I don't know. It just, it gives me all the, the vibes of, of believing in the magic. Using these bluish gray tones, especially the background, this little detail of that torn paper with some gold embossing revealing. You see that? So you've got the background stamp, but then you've got this little reveal. Then you have how she used that stencil, a little bit of that twinkle stencil. There's gold embossing again. Then we've got Santa, but just done in mica stain and snowfall grit paste. I mean, it's the attention to detail that matters on a card. That's what takes, you know, a card into, into the art world. And I love seeing that little bit of deco sheet. And then this, taking that sentiment from the set, embossing it in gold, and then just rolling up the edge of that paper to make it look like parchment. Isn't that, I mean, that's just a fabulous card, especially in the palette. Just so many details when you, when you look at a card and you can call out all of those different elements. And then of course, all the stitching detail uh, on the outside, but those little touches of gold that can really make it a lot of times. Cause it, you know, at first you may not notice those images, especially if you're capturing it here, but you know, as a recipient of the card, when it hits the light, your eye just, immediately bounces to all those details that become significant. This is a great card. And look at, I just love the texture. I love that little snowfall paste on, on all the white elements of Santa. Cool. Then Keisha did this. I love this palette. Again, this is where it's like, I, I didn't even have to look at the back. I knew this was Keisha's because that use of purple and pink, but look how she took that candy stick and did a background in all of those different different colors of purples, mauves, pink, a little bit of gray in there. What a great background. Just stamping that candy stick in different colors. And then we have Santa that's just embossed in black over white cardstock. There you go, you can see that shine. And then silhouette cut. So some makers cut up to the edge. Some people leave a, a little silhouette edge. I think it looks great either way. It's beautiful. And then that little every good wish for Christmas on that purpley background and then just a, an old school ideology. I love those. I don't even remember what these were called, but they were, I don't know, they were like faceted stars or something. They were just really cool. See how they just twinkle? Just a metal embellishment. Those were old school years and years ago. But yeah, beautiful colors and especially that, that use of the stamp. And so when I started looking, it's like, as I was sorting uh, the cards, I'm like, wow, it's really great how people had an idea, but interpreted it totally different. So uh, great use of color on this Keisha. This next card, Tammy B did. So here we've got a little, look at him, a little action wobbler. See, right from the go. I got this now, not a little thinger. This little action wobbler, but 
Um, this is the larger silhouette head of that set. So remember when I talked about Jolly Holiday that you have the full on Santa, and then I also included just that larger head because maybe you just wanna use that uh, as a highlight. And I love how she incorporated this, but here she took the candy sticks, did, did that stamping on the diagonal, but then in between took that manufacturing confectioners in green. Isn't that's a really clever way of creating that background uh, using the candy sticks and, and that confectioner advert and then a jolly good Christmas. Just beautiful. You can see the background, that card's got a little bit of sparkle on there little sparkle here. I'm trying, there we go. If I hold it closer, the camera picks up those little details because remember, sparkle paste is gonna be that high gloss with that little bit of sparkle everywhere. Just so good. <laughs> Fun. All right. Juliana created this card. So here again, candy stick, diagonal, different because these pieces, um, you can see are all different colors stamped in the diagonal to layer in this frame. Then she took a postage stamp die cut, did a little stamping. That's, I think, an old school Stampers Anonymous. I think it was like seasonal postmarks. I don't know the, the name or number, but we did an entire set of, um, of festive postmarks where you could create your stamps. But then she took that Santa head, cut that out, and then used Make It Merry. But just really fun festive colors. The background, a little mica stain. This looks like Holly Branch because I do love that color. Holly Branch is one of my favorites. It's like this olivey gold green. But that color palette, just like how Keisha used purples, so cool when you see the colors together, isn't it? It's like so unpredictable. That to me is, it's the magic, the unpredictability of, of how, like I told you, how makers are going to interpret the same stamp set. Then this one, I'll be honest, I had to do a double take. I had no idea uh, th that Emma was this type of detail colors. It's absolutely gorgeous. So this she took... Um, that brushless watercolor approach <clears throat> with the Santa stamp. So Emma created this. This is using the etc. panel. Then we have a facade upside down. And then Emma went in, look at all that chunky mica. Oh, I love that distressed mica, especially this time of year. So, so good. Then we've got uh, that watercolor. I love, love that. Or not, it's not, it's not called brushless, sorry. No line watercolor. That's what it's called. The no line watercolor where you just stamp in a light color and go in and do all that color and shading because that's the magic right there. Then she paired it with Every Good Wish for Christmas also on there, the candy stick. But then let's look at this background. Look at the background with those tickets. So when you see a stamp set and you wonder like, why did he do that? Or why did he do that? Or why? Or why? There is no why. It just gives you creative opportunity. And when you see it, you're like, yeah, that is such a festive uh, design. To me, I, I put it in there because I love the typography of it. I love just the admit one. It had just something about like, not that you needed a ticket to see Santa, but it was just something about maybe a Christmas carnival. And I love how uh, that became the background where it was just stamped. And then all of these pieces, yes, they're all stitched together. And then all those edges are cut. I mean, really just the amount of work in the background, but you know, every detail matters especially on a panel, because this is something that, you know, it, it's something that will become decor. So you can have a little, little crinkle ribbon, little charm. There's that little starry. I love that starry stamp. Magic, right? So magical. Magical makes for the win. It's so, it's just, it's great. It, it is amazing. All right, we're, we're putting this in. I'm going, I'm creating my foundation. So many different ways that uh, the makers really have used stamps in the most unique ways. I think that's something to, to recognize and, and keep in mind that stamps can be used so many different ways and being mindful of that, remembering that's like, okay, it doesn't just have to be uh, this one way. It could be many, many different ways. There we go. Now we can probably spread these out even more. <laughs> Not as many as the last one. So that's good. Let's get Santa's head in there. There we go. Look at that. There we are. There we are. There we are, and we'll bring this one Both up. Time. Well, you know, I'm, I got it. Yeah, but I pushed Nico's out, so I got to get that back in. Um, it, yeah, if you guys saw how I had to do the puzzle, I have to turn around like, with my head spun around backwards. Look at that. Man, but just look I at all those colors. I mean, that, that's what I love to see. I love to see that it's like you can take a stamped image 
and how you change up the color and how you change up the elements that you use is just it's so good so clever so cool and so fun that, that's my favorite part of of the lives really is seeing how the makers in, interpret the the images really the stamped images that's, that's very cool all right Thank thanks you. mario sure okay so next up we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. You've already seen this set used many, many different ways, but um, Stacy created a, a set that really highlighted just those stamps. You'll see it used on some other makes as well, but I wanted just to show you these cards that Stacy did because I thought, you know, if you just, sometimes when you're, when you're thinking about the holidays, you become overwhelmed and then you just shut down and you're like, I'm not making anything. Keep this in mind, but, but there was also a really great uh, technique that that Stacy came up with for this stamp set. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring these closer so you can see that when you're stamping, especially if you stamp with Distress Ink, splattering some water is gonna create some beautiful punches of color because as Distress reacts with water, it's gonna create this, this beautiful uh, design. This one though, after she stamped this because it already has that texture, take a look at the cardstock. This is where I became really puzzled. So I had to, I had to ask Paul, I'm like, so, I don't, I don't get this because I don't recognize this texture paper. It kind of looks like watercolor, but it's very, very linen. This is the 3D texture fade that I did. I think it is called linen, where Stacy embossed these after she stamped them and just gave it way more of a realistic linen background. I mean, how cool is that? You see that little detail in that 3D? So it just really makes these so textured. Unbelievable. And then this one using that, that switchlet where we've got that seal where you could uh, actually switch out the different, the different edges on here. And then she did her sewing. I wish, this, I wish this specific die lasted a little bit longer. It was here and gone, probably because it was expensive and people didn't get it, but it's very versatile. You've seen Stacy use it really in so many makes because it's a great circle die. Uh, it's a 3D folder, so it, it, it debosses that but it also has interchangeable dies that are magnetic into that embossing folder. So you can switch out uh, whether you have a, a, a scalloped edge, a pinked edge, or a, a regular circular edge. They're very cool, but it was like one and done. I don't know if they're still out there, but cool. I also love how she used the tiny text with some little uh, tiny fasteners. And here, there's that holly from Jolly Holiday, just using that holly and the bow, but I think there is. There's beauty and simplicity, but it's also about paying attention to the detail. And I cannot wait to try uh, using that stamp with that, that 3D folder. It's so cool. It's just really good. <laughs> really good. All right. Then we're going on to like winter woodland. So this is where we'll, you know, we'll talk about uh, the makes with this. And the first ones, of course, incorporate the, the ticking and grain a little bit more, but there's a lot of elements in here. And this is what I was saying that many makers um, use just specific ones, mainly the tree, but then there's other makers that used all the other components. And that's just so you can be reminded that you don't have to use everything within uh, a stamp set. You can just use the, the parts and pieces that inspire you the most, all right? So this first card, Tammy created. So you can see how we've got uh, the grain in the background, just stamped in that beautiful color stitched around the edge, and then she took those components and created a layered collage. And I think that's really fun to, to have that background. She cut out a couple of those little elements, uh, added an ideology tiny clip, did those additional layers over the top. I love how she signed that. That's really a great detail to add her, uh, her signature there. And then we have the tree, and that's cut out, and the layers here. So cool card and a great use of those elements, because sometimes uh, if you if you think about masking, you got a plan, but cutting them out is just as beautiful, especially when everything is layered. All right. This little card duo, Nico did beautiful composition, beautiful colors. So again, taking that background, using that grain, and just stamping it and swiping it, so you just get that little imperfection of the stamp, and then stamping the tree just in a color, beautiful, and then just taking. Uh, the the print stamp I love see that typography is very very cool because you'll see it just used so many different ways so festive prints there's Wonderland and Christmas and all of that stitching detail but look at the cutting jeez whoop, whoop, whoop. that's 
that's a lot. And I love how I added a little bit of ideology. So these are uh, old school type tokens from ideology. There's Mary uh, and there is winter. So we've got Merry Christmas and Winter Wonderland. See, I put that one together a little quicker. Beautiful job, Nico. But the colors, mm, that's, that's vintage right there. Vintage vibe. That's what I said. You can, that tree is, is a statement piece because again, how it stamps. You see the detail of that? That is the detail of really good quality red rubber. See, that's what it is. It's not this mucky mess. It's just beautiful, really beautiful. All right. Then Kubert created this wintry card. So I love, again, just using that ticking, but here's where it's all skippity bit, right? You don't have to ink it and stamp it all. You can just take your ink pad and just swipe it over the top so it fades in and out, but it does create a beautiful linear pattern in the background. Look at that tree with all these little, these little bobbly gems. I don't know what they're officially called, but they've got some great sparkle and some great dimension. Very sparkly. A little bit of stamping in the background, so there's a little bit of ticket, maybe in some lost shadow because it does have a wonderful faint look to it. So there's the ticket from Jolly Holiday. There is that, that tree stamp from Winter Wonder. And I love that. See that tree? Again, look at the detail. But I also love uh, the base of this in, in that Snowfall grit paste. Beautiful, beautiful card very festive, very wintry, and just that little, that little pop of metallic, it just, it makes it, especially uh, on that bluey background. This beautiful. I love, I love the colors. Really nice. Then we've got some more festive cards. I love the festivities that, that the holidays bring out where the makers are like, oh, just, I mean, putting all the red and green together. It's amazing how we, we just, we resonate with a certain one. Uh, so Cassie did this card. I love the detail of this one too. All the distressing, of course, makes it look very, very textured, very fabric-like. But we can start with the background. You can see just a little bit of that ticking show. Then we've got all kinds of lumber. We've got the tree. We've got uh, that little receipt top. Oh, look, Mario, there's your name. It's The tree's being delivered to you. M. Rossi. Look at that. See? I don't... I don't look at the makes really until I'm on live. And then when I hold it to the camera, then I notice even the tiny details. See your oh, name right sweet. there? Sweet. Then we've got, uh, she did the tree and then these other details. So see order number 24 delivered to five. And then she used uh, some little ideology, the little uh, tiny pins and, and tiny clips and then some texture. What a great card, super festive. It's just cute. It's a lot of fun just to take those elements. That's why sometimes you think, why did he do all this stuff? Because this stuff gives you creative opportunity when you're playing. That's what it's all about. As a maker, you should play. Zoe with a Y created this uh, card. I love the, the detail of this, the background. It's really nice. It's got just the, that the beautiful design. This one happens to be embossed, but I like just the, the dark tree on the dark background with the gold embossing. It just has a sophisticated look, doesn't it? It's a simple card, just layered together, but I think that the color palette and just how those pieces come together is, is really nice. It's a great way to layer it. You don't always have to do all the stitching and all of the, the other details, but choosing the right palette and using up some of your inky backgrounds is also a great opportunity for, for any of the holidays. This is where you have more of that woodland vibe with those colors. It reminds me of a tin type as well. I, I totally agree. I saw that comment. It, it is, it's, it's cool. It has a, just a neat, yeah, a neat vibe to it. Then we have a, a big watercolory background. So Barbara did this one. I love seeing that tree watercolored. A, a lot of makers, you know, really utilize the detail of the tree and for good reason. But I love how Barbara took this and inked up the stamp and then did a watercolor because to me it watercolors beautifully, doesn't it? So while you don't capture the detail, you certainly get the wonderful shape of all those branches. I also love how she did the candy stick and did a frame around that background stamp from the Winter Woodlands and then a Jolly Good Christmas again from Jolly Holiday that goes right across that card. So I love, I love how she made a bigger card. So yes, this was really designed to kind of go uh, down the edge of a card, right? Like that, or it could be, you know, a, a packaging, a ribbon, but I love how Barbara created a larger card just to put this across with that pinked edge. A little bit of splattering on the background, a little stamping. It's just good. And all of these makes, again, are going to be on timholtz.com. So as I go through them, for me, it's about showing you the detail because there, again, some people are like, just leave it on the table and 
and enough with the hands. I'm like, then just, just look at a blog and, and Instagram. But to me, it's sometimes you just don't see all of those layers and details in a photograph. And that is the benefit of live. I do, I do love that. I love all the detail. I love the little bells there as well. So great festive card, festive fun. So this card Vicky created definitely a, a woodland vibe. So you can see the back is the black wood grain. This was what we did seasonal last year and I love it. I freaking love it on this card too. So this was a seasonal paper that already comes like this. It already comes with that texture and that color. I love how it frames this. It gives it a completely different vibe to the stamp set. Very, very lumber. Um, but I, I love the background that it's got a little bit of watercolor -y work in the background. We've got all kinds of lumber. There's that beautiful tree. I also love how this was masked. So see, this isn't a cut layer. This is just masked and then the tree over the top of it. So you've got that North Lumber Hardware Company just red on green. It's always great. I love, you know, it's one of those simple techniques, but masking is always so effective when you're holding the card because you're like, how is the red on the green? And it's one and it's, <laughs> it is one of those stamping mysteries. Uh, I love the tag two of five, the little order. And then there you go. That little little tea. I'll say that she did that tea for me. Uh, but I love that that from, I don't even know what stamp set that's from. It's from a stamp set though, that little tea. I just don't know which one, but it's a great little element. And then you can see all that stitching detail. Wonderful, wonderful detail. But yeah, it's all about color. It's all about color and palette and how you see the art, how you see the art come together. That to me is what, what makes a stamp set. So this little series, Kath did. And I just got to show you really what, what is here. So we have a tag, we have a card, we have a coordinating envelope, and we have a gift and gift wrap. And all of this Come is done. Dark all of this is done. And yes, in here is a gift that she sent us. She sent us chocolate, but we're like, do not, I don't even see. It doesn't say don't unwrap until Christmas. It's like, don't unwrap until after live because the wrap is my make. So let's, let's share uh, really the ideas that she had for using this stamp set for all types of, of makes, right? I think that is, that's very cool. So starting with just a tag, I love the idea that Kath had of layering all of these images, again, greens and browns, little pops of red. You can cut out what you want. You can layer things under mica or transparency you can add a little bit of sparkle but what i really loved is on the back of this she has a little marks and spencer gift card that she used as a as a gift tag holder so people say all the time what do you do with tags well a tag could be a card but just adding that additional band around the back to tuck that gift card i thought that was very clever i've not seen that and i thought it was also a great use for the little ideology bells but really a great tag gift to gift to someone then we have a, a card and an envelope. I love all of the, the inky work and stamping. I know that Natipa inspired uh, an industry of just really uh, creating envelopes. And I love how Kath did all of the stamping and Micah, cause you can still write in there or add a label to it. But just the, the whole envelope is art in and of itself. Oh, look at the inside. I love how she added that stamping detail on the inside as the liner. So if you have an envelope maker, this is a, a great Great way to use your stamps, especially that ticking, see ticking and grain for the win. You underestimate the power of that stamp, but you've seen it in so many makes. Um, then we've got the card that goes with it. So there again, we have those stripes and inking part of it. Let, let that break. We saw even where Kuber had that as well. Let that line break because it gives a, a really great definition to a background. Then we have that tree. You can splatter of mica stain. So that's what's giving you that little shine, just splattering the distressed mica stain. A little bit of that background stamp. See, so taking your stamp and uh, most of the time when I do a background like this, I don't even put it on a block because sometimes if I have a stamp on a block, it makes me want to stamp with purpose. But if you just ink up the, the rubber piece itself where you just, you know, peel this off the back, ink it up and then just hold it in your hand. Then a lot of times when you're stamping, you can just go in and just roll some of it there roll some of it there, use some of it there. It, it gives you a little bit more creative freedom if you just hold the stamp in your hand because sometimes a block just makes you wanna like commit. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're working with stamps. I love the, the little hand cut elements that Kath did 
and having those those droplets on the top. I wish those metallic droplets came back this year. They didn't, but I love that. There's a lot of little droplet ideas. And then this, I mean, how beautiful is, is this to take uh, gift wrap, which I'm assuming she just started with, with green gift wrap, and then do your stamp and embossing, whether you're using embossing glaze for a color or doing metallic, and actually customize all of that. Isn't that just a, it's a great use for your stamps to take plain and just make it, I say, take the ordinary and make it extraordinary, because that's really what it is. Oh, well, look at this. These are little shrink plastic tags. I just noticed that. So these little elements, yeah, so that's the stamp, but it's done on shrink plastic. So she created her own little, little charms on there. Then we've got Christmas wishes. That's ideology, little bell. I love the sticker, the die cut with a little bit of that ticking on there. Be good for goodness sake. Well, she knows us well, Mario. She does. <laughs> Kath, this is absolutely charming. Thank you for that. I yeah, it's a lot, it's a couple, I'm sure there's a couple of blocks of chocolate, it's definitely. Like two, two bars. Yeah, two bars of deliciousness. But yeah, what a, what a great use for a single stamp set because sometimes again, at this time of year, the budget starts to get a little overwhelmed and hopefully this inspires you that you can do uh, many things with a stamp set. So let's, let's rock and roll with this. Just good. Good, good. So many, so many brilliant ideas for uh, using this stamp set in, in many unique ways. Many unique ways, many beautiful ways, many, I'll put that one in the middle, many festive ways. I love this. I love this. I love it all. I really do. Gosh, I'll cover some of that up. There we go. Let's do that. Let's do that. See, these were fun. I just, I love Nico's colors too. I thought that was just really the great, great use of color. We've got uh, that festive tree. That. Yeah, super fun and so festive. Beautiful. I'll even sneak one of one of Stacy's little just for color to fill in that blank there. Yeah, magic, right? Magic and merriment all around. Yeah, very very cool. I I love that. So much inspiration, makers, unbelievable. All right, we still have we still have some more to cover. We'll, we're gonna keep even though we're you might be like wait hold on we're out of stamps no but but we've got stuff just for stencils. Oh, there's Nico's label. There you go. Thank you. Thanks. Hand you this. All right. And there you go. Ooh, Thanks, Mario. Okay. So a few more makes. I just want to talk about, um, really, these were more like stencil forward. So that's why I wanted to, to kind of share these. So Stacy did this, and, and this says use stamps and stencils. But I love if you're, if you're a, stamp, a stamper, but you're not really a card maker, stamps have great power when it comes to uh, altering your work. Stamps and stencils both. You have to just think of it as imagery. So Stacey took this etc tag, but if you look at the back, you can see where that that berry branch or branch berry or twig branch or whatever I called that stencil in play. But the color is done with distress embossing glaze. So if you've seen that whole painting with powder demo, that's a great way that you can stencil this with uh, embossing ink and then take distress embossing glaze and using your fingers that's what allows you to kind of hit that area with red. Even if it goes over a little bit with glaze, that's all right. Do the different colors. Then you do your embossing. And then when you ink it, it acts as a resist. So that's where she got that brown background. But then I also love all these other little details. So in the background here, you can see that ticking going across that red ticking. And then she added a lot of beautiful ideology elements. So we've got you know, a snapshot, there's a mica tile there. We've got the photomatic frame. There's even a little die cut from Sizzix using the pine branch uh, and the snowflake. There's some fabric. What else can I find? Oh, there's the ticket. I just noticed that. There's the ticket from Jolly Holiday. Oh, there's a clipping from Ideology. So, I mean, you talk about collaboration of the brands. She's got Sizzix, Stampers Anonymous, Ideology, and Ranger, like all wrapped up into one festive make. So that's great inspiration just to sit and use these elements to pull something together. It could be on a tag, it could be on a frame, it could be on a panel, and whatever elements you like. I even love how I'm guessing, I'm guess, I don't think this is stamped. I'd be surprised if it was. Wouldn't, well, I shouldn't say I'd be surprised, but this might be like real ticking that she did uh, where she added this. See, that's the, that's the fabric. Who knows? Stacy is just brilliant. I love the, the layers and vintage and all that shine is uh, mica tiles, mica flakes, just beautiful. The little, little buttons. Oh, look at that. Look at that little sparkly button. 
Fabulous, right? So good. So, so good. Then we have some, some stencils. So I'm going to talk again about the element stencils because to me, can you give me that element stencil pack, please? Thanks. Mm -hmm. So these stencils, as I mentioned, really have uh, the, the design potential to be used together in different ways. You don't have to use them this way. You can still use them for parts and pieces. And so uh, we had a few makers that just really focused on the stencils in their own unique way. So these first tags, this Zoe with a Y created these, just some, some vintage inspired kind of mixed media tags used however you want. And yeah, you can pair them with stamped images. That's great. You can see with Christmas cartoons, but I love just the, the background of, of some paint. You can use them uh, to paint through them. You can also uh, paint and die cut using, well, you can take a die cut like a heart or you can add uh, any other cutout element. So here's a, a little die cut there. That's some fussy cutting. You can also take the design. So you'll see on the candy cane. So the candy cane stencil has two elements. You've got the solid and you have the stripes. So you can simply go in and ink that and then lay that other stencil on top and do a little texture paste like she did and add those stripes. Then you could do some pen work but very cute. And the nice thing, I mean, I, I like that, you know, on the stencil, you can flip it around so you can create uh, either, either way on this, but you also don't have to use the in, entire stencil. So even though it's a smaller stencil, you can still just use a part of it. So here on the stocking, she just use a part of it and same thing uh, on the candle. So on the candle part of the stencil right here, she just went in and just used that top part. I also love just, again, that pen work, a little bit of, of shine on there from mica and then just adding some paste around there so whether you're inking or pasting you can use whatever elements you want from the element stencils okay so rochelle <laughs> did an entire card series of the stencils so i can't wait to go through them i did not go through them yet so we'll see if i can how many i can identify uh, i know when we first did uh, one of the element sets sharon took a a festive approach, but Rochelle, like, I mean, it's card central. So here we go. This is going to be great. Tiny little cards. So we can see here, this is the candy cane one. So I love the mica stain. I love how just the mica stain, uh, that beautiful ombre effect going from color down again, the sewing detail of the card, make it merry. So it looks like, yep. So it looks like all of the greetings come from Christmas cartoons, just not with the bubble. And I think without the bubble, it doesn't make it cartoon. It just makes it a perfect font. But here you can see the candy cane. So they're, they're inked and then cut. So in this case, if you don't want to do uh, the white on the red, you can just do the red on white cardstock and you're done. So that's a, a great way for uh, using that particular stencil there. This next card, little piece on earth. So for the trees, uh, here we go. So we've got the trees here. So what's nice about this particular stencil, yes, you can ink the trees. Then I put in this little piece so you could ink that element brown right over the top, but you had a stencil. So you have a stencil that goes on a stencil. So first you lay this one down, you do all of your inking in green, then you place that down right on top of the tree and do inking. But I really like how uh, Rochelle went in and just edited the tree, right? She created that and she just cut off that base to have two different size trees and then paired with that piece on earth. And again, that, that twinkling stencil. Oh, cute. Look at this. Be of good cheer. So here element stencil. So this stencil right here, as I mentioned is, is coffee, tea or hot chocolate. So that little thing on the top, a little fluffy bit of whipped cream. I love how she did a little bit of paste, some little sparkly glitter. And again, on a stencil, it can go either way. There's no front or back to the element stencil. So you can use however you want. And then some other elements. Let's see. I know they had to come from here. Oh, yep. Those little sparkles. So those little sparkles right there in this cup, right there from the package. And that little heart is probably from, yep, right there. So both of these elements are also from Element Stencil. Great. So this one, a lot of fun. Uh, I love this little stocking. So all of this, although it looks layered, it is completely flat because it's all part of the stencil. So the whole idea with this stocking is that you can ink the entire stocking. Then you can place that piece over the top of the inked and do it another color or mask it. So there's a little bit of green. Then you have the stripes that fits on top of that to do that layer. And then you have the toe and the heel to ink that layer. 
and then you just have those little polka dots and these dots as random as they look they are randomly designed to fit in the stocking uh, if you want them to to add a little texture so it's it's planned randomness if you will but yeah a really great way and then you could just go in and, and cut that out so that's really the idea of of creating this so and i i just love how rochelle takes each idea and instead of saying oh i'm going to cut out everything or i'm going to do this it's really about creating a foundation and how she wants to utilize these so here this particular stencil i love how rochelle went in and took this flower which is a poinsettia just a an artsy type of poinsettia then that little circular ring that's supposed to be the the outer part of, of the poinsettia and then we've got the holly leaves i think we saw anita use that as a tree but i really love how she went in and just inked different colors and layered those to create all of those flowers you can mask off and do the the leaves a little bit of mica and then holiday greetings really clever then we've got the packages so packages and bows same thing this one pretty simple it's a box die i mean a, a box shape a bow and the little sparkles but that doesn't mean you have to ink the entire thing so this would be the scale of the package that you that you can use but you can also just ink part of it and still use the top part of the bow to make a smaller package make sense yeah and then we've got that those little bursts so you can use these little sparkles you can use little dots all types of little elements that you can use uh, on here i love that with naughty or nice so many ideas this one's another favorite i really love how this particular element stencil turned out because if you use it this way this is what you can create and it's really simple because the pot is its own stencil and when you're using these you just mask it you can mask it with like a, a post-it note or just scrap paper just to use that element of the stencil at a time but this particular stencil has the bucket so you ink that then it's got that little framework of the tree you ink that then you place that same stencil so all of those ornaments are already placed to line up perfectly on the branches and you ink that and then you add the star so yes you are layering that but you don't have to figure out the placement i already did that in the design part for you just to make it easy easy and quick i love these i love the these little ornaments so this one right here these little wonky circles they could be wonky circles but then there's a couple little ornament toppers there so i love how rochelle went in and just added uh, a little bit of sparkly texture paste to one the little polka dots to one and i also love how she used the fa la 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 on the background uh, that, that one kind of faded quick that one kind of faded and then uh, just the stitching detail but see this is one really that you can just sit and make i know you know when you when you think about oh what what do i want to do sit down with a pack of this get out some ink and just have fun look at this with the candle and then she went back with the the holly leaves so here it's taking the candle so this one you get the candle you got the flame and you got that little that little sparkle so that's the detail right there but then down here she's got the holly and the berries so that's going up to this stencil there's the holly and there's the berries very cute great pairing with with mary and bright and all of these are just ink blended here's a cute little simple tree going back to that element it'd be right here so you've got a tree and it could just be a tree i wanted to give a different pot so you could use this pot or this bucket for either tree if you wanted to then you have the star and again those circles already fit the framework of that tree if you wanted to you could just use them as polka dots as rochelle has on other things but again you don't have to figure out placement then we have joy to the world i love uh, seeing how this little house those are little windows so you can add the little light up windows or they could be dark you've got the little heart and the heart can go however you want it to be i love how she stenciled it on the outside and then cut it like that as well so you can see if you i'll hold this card up a little bit closer if you look at the red heart and just kind of stare at that for a minute you'll be able to see the window underneath it and you'll be able to see the edge of the house underneath it but this is all one layer and this is what i mean by like if you start with your light color and then you ink with another color and then you ink with another color you can build it up without really masking um, that's why you can kind of see that edge where it's showing a little bit of that wider cardstock i love that the simplicity then she used that part of the tree so these are really two different trees these trees aren't designed to layer up i just i like the idea of like a, a full tree and i like the idea of a little a little branch tree but i love that for joy to the world oh my gosh this one is adorable there is no snowman in this set okay here we go i got it i think 
Okay, let's figure this out together. So, this, these guys, there's a snowman body. That's freaking cute. Oh my gosh, his hat is the whipped cream. See that? Oh my gosh, that's his hat. The scarf? Sticks. I think the scarf is this. Yeah, because see the little lines? I think the scarf is what she used the top of that stocking inked it once and then inked it again and inked it again to kind of make the scarf because there's the top. And then I think she used a lot of these little dots just to create the face. The little sticks, yeah, you're right. They, they probably came from either this or maybe one of the, I think it probably came from this. These are a little skinnier. So she made the branch arms and then that little triangle. I don't know if I see the triangle nose. You guys, it might be one of these little one of these little bursts from the, oh I, it's right here look at all his carrot noses sweet mother of merriment that is brilliant look at that I'm, see oh my gosh i love that isn't that clever the best part is really trying to figure it out because there's no cheat sheet on this card that is so cute so i mean really what a what a great assortment of cards and ideas using a stencil pack and stamp sentiments or you could you know Again, if you're on a budget, you can just print out your sentiments. There's nothing wrong with that. So really, really clever. Beautiful. We pinch all all of right. Those. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, there. I'm going to put this in a frame just because, That's yeah, I, I want to fill up that whole little, I want to fill up that whole little section. Let's see if, how many I can, how many I can do. Cause they're so cute. Gosh, they're so brilliant. Uh, ta -da. We can do four, four and four. I did the. I did the quick math in my head. I think you'll need a sweet mother of merriment stamp next. Oh, is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes, you know, the season. Oh, you no, no, we got to we got to do this a little different. Cause you guys got to see these. They're so good. Hmm. Am I in? Oh, I'm in. I'm not bad. Yeah, this this layout worked a little bit better, huh? OK, let's let's take a look there. Look at that. I'll move this up these down oh my gosh isn't that great like really so many ideas just using stencils and that like wow amazing amazing all right we've got one more make paula did she also use the the element stencils just a little different so i want to share that i i totally appreciate all the all the work that goes into these makes especially when a maker commits to a whole make or a series so Paula created this. It's a vignette card file. We do love the card files from Ideology. It's just a great box uh, to use, especially if you want to just continue to create for yourself, or it's a great thing for the holidays where you can make little cards or little tags and add it to the box and then use them as you need for the season. Uh, but Paula created this. I love how she used the stamps on the outside over the backdrops. Did a little happy holidays because this vignette card file already comes with the divides. She used a little design tape. It already comes with the hardware. I love how she did that little distress red painted finish. And then all of these little cards. And these cards, um, Ideology has a, a pack of pocket cards. So these are all different die cut cards out of the mixed media heavy stock. So these are already done. And then she just went in and did all of her inking. So it includes tabbed cards and uh, regular cards and folded cards. So if you don't want to cut your own card stock, that's even another way that we can approach it. Let's take a look and see how how Paula created these. I do love this. Look at this one. I love the pattern of all the different candy canes. Just kind of twisted. I love the layers of the pink and the red. Look at that little stitching. That's just stitched on that one little layer because you do get different types of cards. I love seeing that little pairing of, of that holly stamp and that's an ideology clippings and a tiny bell. Really cute to see that candy cane uh, created for the pattern. Look at this. Another cute little card, just using those trees. So again, on the element stencil, we already know that both of those trees are on the same stencil. I love the little base that she did. That's super clever. So that little piece right there that could be used for the trunk of the tree, look how Paula went in and just used that uh, as the base in red, because I do love a red base tree. That's, Mario knows, that, that's my you weakness. Do. When it comes to vintage bottle brush trees, if it's got a red base, yeah, I hear. lose my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to have it. Yeah. Really great with all the stitching details. And again, you have just a, a, little, a little card or a pocket to use. Then we have this, look at this stamped on transparency. That's really clever, just taking the stamp. So this is 
uh, just using some backdrops and ideology. I love the whole break of that. And using uh, just that, I love those festive cuts. There we got a little hope on the divide. Wow, she did more than stencil. She did stencil stamp. She did the whole thing in this make. Very cool. Look at the details of that. The packaging, and, and I love the stitch work around the packages. That's also a really clever thing to do. A little sewing around there, some inking. Be of good cheer. Oh, look at that. Sticks. But look at those colors. See? So Mix it, mixing and matching all of those colors. Well, the art, yes, but yeah, I do. I love that. I love the idea of that. Really, really clever. And then a little stitching and the clipping. Beautiful. Beautiful stencil work. Very cute. Look at those ornaments. Look at all those different colors just doing the little blend. And the metallic star, the little pot, that little stitching. Yeah. So cute, right? Every little one is just cute. Look at these ornaments. Look how Paula just took that and, and took that ornament stencil and just had it kind of uh, bleeding off and then just went in. That's that little, that little twist right there. I know the stamp. See, I know these stamps probably more than I should, but that's this. That's a little smoke that comes out of the chimney. See the little smoke right there? I did that as a stamp. She used it as a little ornament cording. That's really clever. Brilliant. Then we've got the little company co-op. I love that. Look at this card with the tree. I love the stitching around there. That's really, I mean, if you're good with a sewing machine, like a lot of these shapes are, are pretty basic to go around. I also like just seeing that stencil around the edge. Look at that, cute. So here's the holly, the berries, and then that little circle that I said was the center of the poinsettia. I love that as just a design element. That's really great. That little dotted circle and then the little sparkly bits and see the stitching details. I bet she had a blast doing this, really. This is the kind of make that you can just kind of because you're, you're just constructing little works of art and you can kind of do, do your thing. <laughs> it's only easy stitching. It's easy for you, Paula. I'm not really good at the whole turn in the corner or even the start and stop. I'd get to the end here and I would step on it. It would just go right off the edge. Yeah, it would come flying out of the back. I love the Hello December. Paula, just so good. Look at that. I like the, the divide of the colors of the ornament and I really like that the pairing of of so many different stamps, especially the sentiments with the stencils because the style, it really complements each other. But I love it on the holly branch. Really good idea for that ornament. See, such a great little design. And don't freak your freak about the berries. I think some people are already like, well, how do you mask the berries? It's just part of the design. And I think that this, this concept really proves that. It's just part of the design element of, of just taking uh, that art and inking it and then just that little, that little cut, celebrating just a little too much. I need a shirt that says that. That could be like my everyday. Oh, look at that. Little embossing. I love the colors. I love the bright pink and the green and the, the gold embossed poinsettia. I love the, see, that's a stamp from Winter Woodlands. I think Paula challenged herself to use like every stamp set in some way. Possibly. Yeah. I haven't, I've been keeping track, but I'm sure she did. Look at that. See, I love that little sparkle paste on the stocking. Having those little elements really allow... Isn't that twinkle? It has such a great retro vibe, that stencil. One of my favorites. Look at the colors here. Look at these trees. Pink, purple, mauve, blue. So fun. Oh my gosh. This really is. This is a fun, fun make. Oh, see? I love that stamp. Yep. Maybe open for inspection if necessary. See, if, if Kath would have stamped that on her gift wrap, that would have been it. If, if, oh, Paula just said that this is going to be on her blog today. There you go. You're even going to get more detail. See, Cass should have stamped that on her, on her gift wrap, and then we would have inspected it as necessary. But it was, it's going to be worth the wait. I love the trees and really those red bases. That's it. I'm all over that. Look at the stencil. I love how this is inked, and then there's also a little bit of gold embossing over that same area. You guys see that? That's really great. Talking about Christmas. Yes. Oh, I know. And a lot of makers, I'm sure, are going to be sharing so much today of of what they do. But I do, I love the stamped uh, transparencies on here and the stitching and the little bits of, of ideology. Oh my gosh, so fun. Look at that. Look at that Santa and the reindeer. From, I know from Christmas cartoon. Uh, and I love seeing that, the little house there, but then bright, bright stars that glitter overhead and just seeing all of those dots uh, colored. So good. That's just really fun and festive. That's magical. Just, just that little stamp alone is magical. Naughty or nice. Hmm, look at that. Look at that little joyful. See, I love that fluffy little whipped cream, which now I see as a hat as well. Great stitching detail. 
I love the background of this. Look at all the, see, that's a good stencil. When Paula saw it, she's like, I love it. I'm like, I know, me too. I don't know why. It's just a cool design. It makes me think uh, the season, but I do love Message of Love and that little gold embossed heart, little joyful wishes. See, so many great ideas of how to use the designs, the colors, the layers, even if you're just wanting to do a little, little sewing, stitching detail. Oh, look, little ideology candy cane, special delivery in an overly merry manner. Magic, magic and merriment for the win.